Okay, <clears throat> so, so, okay. Um, all right, so I guess I'll start, I wanna share a little bit about the four cities. I'm gonna do a share screen <clears throat> so that we can have that in mind when we do the meditation and then we'll have more people come in sharing um, from each city. Hopefully we'll have um, somebody from Hebron too. <clears throat> so the plan is that we will have uh, two people from Yerushalayim sharing, uh, Rav Marmerstein about Rav Cook's teaching of Yerushalayim and Ben Melo. And Jonathan, you might have a song, maybe Yvette, you have a poem from Yerushalayim. And then we'll have Rabbi Greenberg speak about Tzfat. Um, <clears throat> then Eliyahu McLean about Hebron. Hopefully we'll come, be able to coordinate the time because he's in a tour in the Maratha Machpelah and the Cave of Patriarchy. And then we'll talk about Tiberias and that will be more experiential singing and poems. Um, and let me share screen and welcome everybody. Um, let's see, share screen, there we go. All right, so <clears throat> it's very interesting to find out that <clears throat> it's not just the elements that we're talking about, these holy cities. <clears throat> it's, um, as we know, most of us that Jerusalem is fire, Tiberius is water. Can you see the table? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Tzfat is air, Hebron is earth. Um, it's also in the different olamot of the tree of life. So the highest one, Atzilut, is Jerusalem. Bria is Tiberias, and Tzfat is Yetzira, and Hebron is Asiya. Asiya is also like the earthy plane. So it makes sense. In terms of the Sfirot, Jerusalem is Chochma, Tiberias is Bina. So we have the, the male, female kind of coordinates here, the Chochman and Bina between Yerushalayim and Tiberias. Tzfat is <coughs> Tif Eret, excuse me, the heart chakra, shall we say, of Israel. Hebron is Malchut, which is interesting because if you, if you superimpose the tree of life over Israel, um, then you have the Malchut at the bottom, almost like, sometimes you imagine it being Nies de Bokeh, like, or the Mitzperimon, like where the crater is, like the lowest part of Israel. And here's somebody, I think it's maimachronim.com, <clears throat> who say that <clears throat> the prophets belong to Jerusalem, the sages belong to Tiberias, Kabbalists to Tzfat, and Hebron the Patriarchies, which makes sense, is for sure. Okay, so now we have the map. We don't have a European friends still yet, so but they can relate to other holy sites, but we will focus on the Jewish sites today. Tzfat, Tiberias. So it's a bit like <clears throat> the top. Well, if the tree of life was superimposed on Israel, it's the top spheres, and then Rushalim and Hebron are the bottom two. So two dyads in the top and the bottom. Okay, I'm just going to give you some pictures of when we meditate. Here's Tzfat. <laughs> and uh, here's Dami below is the, the, um, the Tzion of Ari, <coughs> Arizal. And opposite here is Mount Meron and mm. the village of Shimon Bar Yochai. Um, Here's one of the holy places, Abu Av, I think it is, the synagogue of Abu Av. They have a very ancient Torah from the time of the Ariza. There are a lot of beautiful synagogues there. And it's definitely a Kabbalistic city. Um, here's our beloved Yerushalayim and the Kotel. And we have also the other four quarters other religions, um, bringing down Hebron here. 
here is the actual mask and <clears throat> around this wall here is I think also a connection to a deeper place in the cave. It opens up only a few times, <clears throat> a certain entrance opening to the very Petah Ganeden, to the very entrance of, of paradise, shall we say. And I've felt it a few times, it's extremely powerful. So I hope we'll be able to feel it and be there more than a few times a year. Fortunately, we don't have much power over it <clears throat> when we see that or open up. So here's a, a place where <clears throat> Jews are coming in also. And the next picture is when the Muslims also praying here. So it's a shared sanctuary. Okay, now we have the Sea of Galilee. Kinneret Shelano. It's a nice song in Hebrew that sings about the Sea of Galilee. And here we have. One second, Eva. Eva. What? One second, Eva. One second. Yeah. Kinneret, Kinneret, Kinneret. No, 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 this one. Ah. That's so sweet. Maybe we can sing it later. I said the government. I don't know the words. I don't know the words, but okay. <laughs> okay, lovely. Um, so, and then we have the Sea of Galilee here and Amir Balanes, his sanctuary. It's a beautiful synagogue too. So there's a lot of um, also, uh, shall we say, um, holy tzaddikim and rabbis who are buried near the Sea of Galilee. It's also a feminine place. That's why we will have Meira share a poem of Miriam, the song of Miriam and Amrita from Sweden. Yvette might have something too to share because we want to also bring the feminine, the water um, element today. Um, they say that there is a well of Miriam at the bottom. I've overheard also some people say there's a Stonehenge, which is like big, big, big rocks in the bottom. So there maybe is more mysterious stuff there than we know. Okay, great. So that's it. And, um, and then I'll show you my, my Sphera pictures later. And... Um, Fantastic. Oh, Amrita is here. Thank you, Shalom. Great. So we have the contingency of the women. Uh, I miss you very much, Amrita. I missed you too. I'm here. Oh. I, think I could come today. Finally, I have connection. Okay. So listen, um, we will do now a wonderful um meditation bringing all this energy down and then we'll have Eliyahu McLean coming in sooner than he thought so we might have to shift Hebron to before you shall I will see because he's very busy so thank you beautiful beings and um, I just say I just say something about the elements Eva yes and uh, there is there is kind of a order to the elements how they go because okay. It's from the most dense to the least dense, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you can say that the most dense one is obviously earth. And then the second one is water. And the third one, it's, um, it's, uh, it's air. And the last one is fire because it's the least, it's almost the most etheric, uh, closest to spirit. But then you can also switch between uh, the earth and the water because there is generally more water than there is earth, you know, in our bodies, on the surface of the planet. So you can decide if you want to start with water or earth, but they should be the first two and then the next, the next two should be uh, air and then fire. So really the best is if you want to do it by that order, then to, to, to finish with, uh, with Jerusalem should be the last. One. Finish with Jerusalem in the meditation. Yeah. yeah. So I was just thinking of doing <clears throat> Sfat, Tiberias, Jerusalem, and Hebron. But you, you prefer I do Hebron before in, in the meditation? Hebron or Tiberias first. doesn't matter which one you decide. 
I told you if it, if you're going by the density or by the amount of what there is, yeah. There's more air than there is fire. I was you thinking know? more in terms more of water and, and earth than there is air, but there's more water than earth, especially in our body. Our body is mostly water, but then the next element is earth in our body. So so it depends if you're going by the the body standard or by the density standard. <laughs> I, I was thinking of doing it through the Shekhinah standards. <laughs> So if you don't mind, <laughs> um, but if you want to add later the more practical uh, 3D, that's a great thing because I had that in mind for the meditation. Yeah, yeah. Would that be okay if you add it later? It's it's totally fine. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying that okay. that's a kind of an order that exists. That's all. Yeah, I like it. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So everybody, welcome to relax into just being. <laughs> So good to see you all. And so take a comfortable position. <laughs> uh, maybe you can lie down or sit on the chair and make sure that your spine is straight <coughs> and your cell phones are off. And this is time for you. And now we're going to connect this time to the, not so much the global meditation, but the holy cities of the land of of Israel, Holy Land. Okay. Let's take a do, few deep breaths. Shem Hashem Naserim Etzliach. So imagine that you're enveloped by loving guides and presence. To your right, Michael. To your left, Gabriel. In front of you, Uriel. And behind you, Raphael. Ima Dama Earth, power, Mother Earth holding you lovingly and Shekhinat El above you. Imagine a golden dome of manifestation so that this meditation can serve you and our loved ones and collectively. Imagine like a meter above your head, your crown chakra, your keter, a nekudat or a light point connecting to your soul, to your guides, and allowing for divine light, Hashem, your guides to bring forth the love and light that is in the universe. It's from Hashem's love for us, God's love for us and our souls. And let it expand into our head, our crown. <coughs> Excuse me. A third eye, our crown, and a third eye in the throat chakra. And down to our torso, filling it with liquid loving light, just clearing like a waterfall, just clearing, clearing, clearing. All the nooks of our thoughts and brain activities that are not serving us, just clearing and washing away through all the layers down, through the heart chakra, the deferred, through your lungs, your arms, maybe you wanna shake your arms. You wanna put your hand <clears throat> on your stomach and one hand on your heart. Just connect to yourself. Just breathe in a few times. Breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. Bringing, bringing in the new and letting go of the old. Bringing in the new and letting go of the old. And let that love and light go through your lower chakras, your solar plexus, the second chakra and your foundation chakra, your legs, 
down to the feet and let that waterfall of liquid light just wash into Mother Earth through the layers underneath your house, through the aqua fairy, through the <clears throat> magma into Mother Earth, the core essence. And what gravity is, is her love for us. She's wanting to clean us and pull away what's not serving us. So just let it cleanse. When you feel empty in your stomach and your lower body and your heart, torso, your mind, slowly allow for Mother Earth healing. Vibration come through you, through the layers, back forth, slowly into the magma, the clay, the bottom of your house and into your feet. And really, don't be afraid of the power of Mother Earth. Let her in. She wants to make you a beautiful tree, a blossom, a flower. Connect to the four elements of those holy cities with four elements in our body, <clears throat> fire, earth, air, and water. And slowly let that come through your legs, up to your lower chakras, into your torso. And hold your hand above your heart and feel the four chambers of the pumping source of love in your body. The heart is our last organ that lives, that is alive before we move to the other side. It's our best friend. So let's really embrace it and listen to our hearts. And as Mother Earth is finding its way and connecting to the divine love and light from above in our heart and the Tiferet, see if anything needs to be birthed or growing, a seed or a bulb or a tree that wants to grow, like a holy city within your own being, a holy kingdom, a holy palace, a holy presence that is only yours, your own manifestation of who you are in this world. And let that growth come up and see what needs to be blossomed, needs to grow, what kind of plant, in through your, heart, your throat chakra, into your crown, your third eye, seeing where it needs to be moved into, where does it need to be manifested in your crown chakra, in your keter, the in sof shen, ashen, atzilut. See what kind of branches and what flowers and what kind of bees and butterflies are attracted to this particular bloom the tree or the tree of life all the spheres coming down through the 49 days of Svirata Omer to clear our hearts and minds our body feel the strength and the, the energy that is exuding from this growth within your own being like a tulip that is an uh, open vessel to receive from above. And listen to what it is you want to manifest in your life. And slowly, slowly come back to your bodies and let's now transport ourselves like we usually do at the four corners of Yerushalayim. And we're holding hands in a circle. And we're spreading this love and light to our loved ones, to all the religions in the 
Jerusalem, Holy City, all the four quarters. And we're starting our meditation from Tzvat while we're standing at that point we started two years ago, grounding the energy in the foundation rock. So after the third, I said third, the second temple was destroyed, the Shekhinah has been residing in Tzvat, the female principle of God. And we're waiting for that redemption to happen again. So we're imagining or we're seeing, we're visualizing the birth of that power of Tzvat imbuing all of the Holy Land and the world through her sacred essence. So let's send love and light to the north of Israel and its neighbors. for the Tiferet and for Tiberias, for the water well of the feminine, for the Torah, for the Tzadikim there and Be'er Miriam. May we be cleansed with the water and big mikveh of our souls and bodies. And then bring it down to Hebron to ground that energy in the very depth of Gan Eden, the patriarchy cave for forefathers and foremothers. In Sof of the Gan Eden. And then bring it back to Yushalayim. And again, let's bring now this beautiful energy that we have created to the whole world through spiraling golden circles mm. to the region and outside of Israel, to Europe, to Africa, to Asia, circling to the other side of our globe, to South America, North America, Australia, Hawaii, the poles, and imbuing the Mother Earth with the sacredness of the Holy Land. And sending love and light to all our friends and family all over the world. bringing beauty and kindness and hmm, from the spheres of today of the spirit of Omer, we're in Gvura and of Yesod, so of the strength of the foundation rock. And also within Mother Earth, we're sending love <coughs> channels through the foundation rock inside Mother Earth, straight to Hawaii, straight to holy places, all over the world <clears throat> to holy mountains and holy sanctuaries and people who want to shift and change our world, God willing. And then we're slowly coming together, holding hands again. And as a continued spiral and completion, we'll envision white doves of peace circling around us. And these will continue to fly out through our planet to remind people or whisper to them about peace and love and kindness. God willing. So we will complete it and we will still hold our hands, but we will come back to this Zoom world and uh, we will recreate it again next month. So thank you for holding space. And I'm looking forward to hearing from all the different people from the holy cities so we can embrace more the circle that we started. Thank you.
Okay. Wonderful. Thank you for being here. Um, so I see we have uh, we have both Rav you, Rav Hack and Liao came in at the same time. Let me just double check. Uh, Liao, how much time you have to share about Hebron? Are you with us? Uh, yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. So uh, wonderful. I just wanted if uh, you could wait until uh, Rav Yav Yitzchak shares, or if you're no problem. No problem. You, I'm waiting. It's okay. I'm on, yeah, I'm in transit, so uh, you have time. Yes, sure. Because he's scheduled at nine thirty. Okay, so after we hear our holy brother, I love to hear from you and Hebron. Thank you, Eliyahu. Okay, Rav Marburstein, Rav Yitzchak. Are you there? Here I am. Okay, will you share the Rav Cook teachings from Yerushalayim? Sure, let me just set this up. I need... Um, share screen? Get, I need to share screen, yeah. Um, the thing is, don't forget to bring me back the host. I won't. <laughs> okay. So it's also Yom Yerushalayim soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so we, 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 we get, we're going to have a poem or two about Yerushalayim as well. Oh, okay. yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to relate to that. Um, um, that would be after you. Okay, so... Can Let I me, share screen now? Am I ready? I'm going to make you a host. There you go. Yeah, choose. Okay. You are the host now. Okay. So Shalom Aleichem, everybody. And I'm sitting in Katamon Shebit Yerushalayim. And um, I would like to... to to share um, a, a few, two, two pieces of Rav Cook text and a poem song that are connected to Yerushalayim. And when you were speaking about the, I was wondering about the order. The historical order is actually, you know, Hebron first because David Melech was king in Hebron and where Avram and Sarah are buried, and, and in lots of ways, Hebron is the beginning. But Yerushalayim is obviously the, the ultimate, and the home of the Beit HaMikdash, and the future Beit HaMikdash, and, and, and the entire history of Yerushalayim is it's extraordinarily in the soul of of Israel and, and the people of Israel and the history. So much of it is, is focused in on Yerushalayim. And um, Rav Cook was very much involved in the restoration, the rebuilding, the re-envisioning of Yerushalayim. And we're approaching Saturday night is Yom Yerushalayim, the 28th of ER, marking uh, the that how many however many years it is from 1967, the third day of the of the Six Day War, where completely unexpectedly two days before that we have Harabait Beyadenu and the Kotel and the first people that they bring to the Kotel, I, would have, I should have had the photograph here, but the first people that they brought to the Kotel was the chief rabbi of the army, Rabbi Goran, brought his father-in-law, the Rav Nazir, Rav Cook's main student, and Rav Cook's son, Tzvi Yehuda. They were the first ones that they, first civilians that they brought to the Kotel immediately after it was uh, liberated. And it had significant meaning for them, a particular level of meaning, because the 28th day of ER was always an important day in the Rav Cook world, in the Rav Cook family, since 1904, because it was the 28th of ER in 1904 that Rav Cook first stepped foot in the land of Israel. 
And every year there are letters where they mark, oh, today, yesterday was the 28th of ER. This is the day that the Cook family returned to Israel. <clears throat> and my understanding is in some way, it's very significant that Yom Yerushalayim is the anniversary of the day that he stepped foot into Israel because <clears throat> He was very much the Kohen Gadol of the of the rebuilding of Israel and the reestablishment of uh, of Yerusha, the re, the recreation of Jerusalem, and towards that, he was very encouraging. And here's a little bit from a piece that he wrote <clears throat> around 1910, and I'll read mostly in Hebrew, but mostly in English Hebrew. Most people here understand Hebrew. Uh, not everybody, no. Not every, no, I'll translate. Yes, Some of his, yeah. his, his Hebrew is so beautiful. Hatol higia. The time has come. Me'orot ayamim koraim lanu bekol gado. The historical events are calling us in a great voice. Israel, bene et ir kachecha. Israel, build your holy city remembers Am Olam, the nation, the eternal nation, Am Kadosh, the holy nation, Shvu, Shomer Emunim, the, the keeper of the faith, remember et Shvu'atcha, the oath that you took on the, on the rivers, the banks of the river, on the Babylon River, on the, the banks of the, the rivers of Babylon, that's it, <laughs> what you took on the rivers of Babylon, if I forget you, Jerusalem, forget my right hand. Cleave my tongue to my palate if I do not remember you. Now, Rav Cook is speaking. The easy part of this oath we've already fulfilled. In our mouths. Zacharta et Yerushalayim v'tiskor tamid. We remember Jerusalem. We'll always remember it. Aval ke'et. But now, in the night, in the twentieth century, hayamin nidreshet liot yad pshuta. The right side tishkach yemini is calling to be a yad pshuta, a outstretched hand. Because we have to bekoach vechel beyamin oz veremema with great strength and heroism, we have to live not at ir tifartene. We have to build the city of our splendor, to raise it out of its desolation. La harima mishomemota la ateret la atra betifara to crown her in splendor. The binyanei chemed with sweet sweet building. Behod Yikrat Kodesh in the splendor, precious holiness. Zachru Merachok et Hashem. Remember from the distance Hashem ve Yerushalayim and Yerushalayim ta'ale alevavchem will rise up in your hearts, said Yirmiyahu. And now it is time for us to do this. And why is it so important? Well, he, Rav Kook has an extraordinary passage in a notebook that he wrote. <laughs> a review uh, that he wrote already. This notebook he wrote in Chutzlaretz before. No, no, he wrote this this passage in Yafo. He arrived in Yafo the twenty eighth of the year nineteen o four. And in his writings, at around somewhere in the next five or six years, he wrote this piece. Yerushalayim, v'nekudat Zion be'yichud, Jerusalem, and the point of Zion especially. What is the relationship between Yerushalayim and Zion? So here, Yerushalayim and its Zion, Zion point especially, Torah, is a teaching al shivat hamin enoshi on the return of humankind le merome matzavo to its higher state 
ביחס לעמים שכבר נתפגעו, in relation to the nations that we've already divided into, Yerushalayim is a teaching שישובו לחטיבה טובה וטהורה, that we will return to a good and pure unit together, humankind. And then once we do that, once Yerushalayim effects the return of humankind to their higher level of unification, where we're not stuck in the national boundaries and, and prisons that we've created for ourselves, that becomes <clears throat> the opening for the next step, which here he defines. Omnam gadol mimena hu gan eden. Even greater than this is the Garden of Eden. Sheyashuv hamina enoshi, in which humankind will return legova ma'alato bepratav, to its greatest heights in all its particulars, every part of life, we will return <coughs> to our highest level. Ad shelo yetzarich shum limud v'adracha, to the point that we will not need any more learning <coughs> or direction or guidance. Velo ezrat kibbutz. We're not going to need the help of the community. To, to keep us, to sustain ourselves, or to, to define us, or to tell us what to do, and so forth. <clears throat> because then we'll be at the state, ki'im lichyot, we will be able then to live, began Eden, le'ovda ve'leshamra, to serve it, to protect it. But in what sort of experience? Our life will be experienced betor tiyul, the oneg murchav, a a journey, an expanded, blissful journey. Hamemale et achomer v'haruach edlanim that will fill the material realm and the spiritual realm with Edenistic divine blisses. So I want to bless us as Yerusha, as we're building Yerushalayim and celebrating Yerushalayim, that we really serve the unification of all <clears throat> humankind. Do we go past our national boundaries? And in that way, that we'll be able to return to a much higher level of functioning in every part of life. And people will really come to their highest selves and no longer need external direction and then we'll be in a level where we can all truly live in the garden of eden la ovda shamra and our lives will be a expanded blissful journey full of spiritual and material delights may we be so blessed be may rabbi amenu venomar amen amen feel free and I would like to end with <clears throat> a piece that Ralph Cook wrote in London around 1917. The Hatikva had just come up as the anthem for the, the Zionist movement chose to be its anthem. And Ralph Cook didn't really, <coughs> didn't like it. And he offered <clears throat> this as the anthem for the, for the rebirth of Israel. It, uh, Hatikva became the official anthem, but in the religious Zionist world, this is sung along with Hatikva. I think they usually sing this before Hatikva and then conclude with Hatikva. Um, so I would like to uh, finish this presentation by sharing it, and I'll, I'll chant the Hebrew and, and translate 
paragraph by paragraph. But you'll see it's an extraordinary rhyming poem. Le'ad chaya bilvaveinu ha'emuna ha'ne'emana l'ashuv le'eretz kotshenu irba david chanan forever alive in our hearts is the faithful faith to return to the land, to our holy land, to the city that David established, which is Yerushalayim. Shamana mod le goralenu avhamohon kana shama nichyehe Nichyehe chayenu, chaye adat mimana. There we will stand for our destiny, which the father of many nations, Avraham, acquired. There we will live our lives, the lives of community beyond count. Shama navod elokeinu bechedva begila ubirnana shama naale leragleinu shalosh paamim beshana There we will serve our Elohim with joy rejoicing and song, there we will rise up to our pilgrimage three times each year. Torat chaim chemdatenu mipi elyon nitana nehetzahach hi nachalatenu Mimidbar Mahatana, the Torah of life is our sweet desire from the mouth of the Most High. It was given. The eternal is our inheritance from the desert, a gift. Torat Chaim Chemdatenu Mipi Elyon Nitana Netzachi Nechalatenu Mimidba Atana. So forever is alive in our hearts the faithful faith that we will restore our holy land and thus serve the perfection of all life in the city that David established, Yerushalayim. And so I bless us that Yerushalayim truly become fulfill its destiny as the home for the Beit HaMikdash that can truly bring shalom to the entire planet. Bimei Rabbi Amenu. Amen. Omar, amen. Thank you so much. Amen. amen. Thank you, Rabbi Yitzchak. Do you want to hosting Eli? Yes, of course. And thanks for holding the space in Yerushalayim. We're going to go now to Hebron to Eliyahu McLean because he's busy giving um, a guided tour. But then we come back to Ben Melo. Uh, we're also going to have Rabbi Greenberg speak from Tzvat. And um, Amrita and Meira want to share some songs in between and Yonatan. So thank you so much. Thank um, you very much. Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach. Blessings. And Eliel McLean, can we hear from you? Um, there you are. I, I, hi, I'm actually getting on a bus. I'm in Tel Aviv on my way home ah, from Hebron. Okay. Okay. I have to catch uh, a bus uh, shortly. Okay. So, okay. Um, I, so I'm basically uh, at a bus stop in Tel Aviv uh, in, in transit from Hebron to the town of Harish where I live. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, Oh, hold on a second. 
why don't you take someone else and wait till I'm on the bus, okay? Okay, right. when you're on the bus, can you just connect us okay. with Kavron okay. uh, energetically? Thank you. Okay, so we need a song now. Um, uh, Jonathan, you want to sing Kinere Chili or Amrita? No, no, no not, not that one, but I have, a, I have a song for the elements. Just elements? A, okay. Yeah, just to give a general, uh, a general uh, feel for the elements. It's very basic. And uh, it's something that uh, Keshet actually helped me write the words for it. <laughs> Also, uh, I'm, I'm thinking how uh, the elements also there are the number four, but there's there's also a fifth element, and there's a uh, all kinds of ways to look at it. The fifth element can be, according to the Chinese, you uh, replace uh, the element of air with uh, with wood and metal, and then there is also a matter of like the fifth element being the element of spirit within within the the physical elements so there's there is that and then there is uh, and then there is the count of the chakras or the seven uh, which we have seven days a week and there's also a connection uh, each each chakra has I'm not going to go into it too much because I don't want to expand on it but every every chakra has one or two elements that are, are uh, persist like uh, that exist in it and uh, so, so it's also very much connected to our physical field and our uh, manifestation in our lives. And, uh, and I want to remind everybody, which is really interesting, that I don't know so much uh, spiritual practice that goes on in Tiberia. I know there is some, but not so much. Uh, and it's interesting because this is the, the place that uh, physically we have the most of, you know, most of our bodies made of water. And Tveria, Tiberias is, uh, is connected to this element. So it's interesting that over there, there is something um, that we want, to, we want to fulfill. And I want to, to add that maybe there is a, uh, sure, we've been traveling as people, as a Jewish nation, you know, and I think that maybe there is a, something missing from our fluidity in this world, like we're a little bit uh, stubborn in our way, and maybe something about 
our fluidity needs to, to expand and maybe looking for these uh, lost 10 tribes and like inviting the sparks of wisdom, of knowledge, of, uh, of consciousness, you know, just to, to, to be exposed to us and for us to be able to see them as well. And, uh, and I believe that will uh, manifest like a intensify the, 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 the water, the element of water that we need to intensify it more in our, in our lives in the world because we're kind of like, also the world is becoming hotter and like everything is, the water is like evaporating, but we need to somehow uh, learn how to work with it again, you know, with the water and, uh, and go deeper into it and uh, just welcome, you know, I really welcome this energy, this new, and we're planting a seed uh, we're actually looking, oh, there is Rav Dov Kuk is in Tveria and he's the grandson of Rav Kuk. And, uh, we were trying to get him, to get to him, but it didn't work out yet, maybe the next time or sometime soon. That will be wonderful if we have some, uh, yeah. something of the essence of the spiritual essence of what, what's going on in Tveria, because I don't know so much about it, honestly. And, uh, and I'd like to very much, yeah. Nice. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so any, any, anyone, should I play another song or is there, uh, Eliyahu is ready or someone else is ready? Yeah, <laughs> Eliyahu, you ready? If not, okay. two more. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm on a moving bus. Okay. Um, no, shalom, shalom. Shalom. So Eliyahu McKen is a fantastic peacemaker for many years. So we used to work with him in Sulha and He's part of the peacemakers. He's doing so much wonderful work in Israel and over the, all over the world with imams and rabbis and, and Palestinians and Israelis. And now he works quite a lot in Hebron. So he's going to share with us about the holy city. Thank you. Okay. So uh, just so you see where I am, I'm on a bus. I literally was in Hebron all day today um, for 11 years through Abraham Hostel in Jerusalem, I've been running weekly tours, actually twice weekly tours, every Sunday and Wednesday for international travelers from all over the world who come and want to have, have a taste of Hebron. And it's a unique tour in that we take them to Hebron. They have half a day with me, an Israeli Jewish guide, and half a day with a Palestinian Arab Muslim. Mm. So they hear the two narratives you know, two stories. And uh, so today I had 18 travelers from Asia, United States, Europe, from all over the world. And I was sharing with them the beauty and the richness, but also the complexity of the two children of Abraham, Jews and Muslims, especially Israelis and Palestinians, who both consider Hebron a holy city. Now, for this evening, the theme of the four holy cities, Hebron, is the second in rank of holiness after Jerusalem, it's the second holiest city for the Jewish people. Can you guys hear me with all the noise? Yes. Yes, you can hear me. Okay, good. So give me a holler if I need to uh, unplug the, the earphone microphone and maybe go a little bit closer on the iPhone. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Hebron, Hebron, the word Hebron in Hebrew is Hebron. Can everyone say Hebron? Hebron. Hebron. Hebron comes from the Hebrew verb Hebron. 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 Hebron comes from the Hebrew verb Lechaber, which means to connect. The word for Haver, friend, friend, Haver, it's the same root. So it's a city of connection. Okay, hmm. Lechaber to connect. So it's connecting heaven and earth. Okay, connecting in many levels. Okay, so Hebron is Lechaber. It's also our second holy city after Jerusalem. Jerusalem, of, as you know, that we learned from Yitzhak. Holy city. But it's Hebron. Jerusalem is the city of fire. Hebron is the earth element. Earth. Why earth? First of all, when you're in Hebron, you're walking the streets, it feels a bit like the Wild West, very earthy kind of town. You know, you like not only the most far out 
Jews, that they're called the settlers of Hebron, live there, the most uh, intensely passionate lovers of the land of Israel. But you also have Palestinians who are passionate about the city because Abraham, Ibrahim, is born there. So in Hebron in Hebrew, Lechabel, it's referring, referring to the connection to the prophets, prophet. In Arabic, Hebron is called Al-Khalil because Abraham or Ibrahim, as he's called in the Quran, is called Ibrahim Al-Khalil Ar-Rahman, Abraham, the beloved friend of Allah. Okay, so in Arabic, it's also called beloved friend. It's the same meaning in Hebrew and Arabic. Al-Khalil Hebron. Now, when you come to Hebron, the, the obvious place and the first place you go to is the tomb of the patriarchs, Me'arat HaMachpelah, okay? Me'arat HaMachpelah, the word Machpelah, which we in English call the tomb of the patriarchs or tomb of the four fathers and the four mothers, okay? In Arabic, it's called the Ibrahimi Mosque. It's an incredible ancient structure. The second temple mount in Jerusalem, built by King Herod, right? You know, he took the second temple and expanded the walls of what is now the Kotel, right? At the southern walls. That whole wall structure of Jerusalem is actually based on the first architectural wonder that was built previously to the second temple mount in Jerusalem, which is the tomb of the patriarchs in, in Hebron. The same architects, the Herodian architects, built this incredible ancient structure that when you come there, you're in awe because for 2,000 years, even though the temples in Jerusalem were destroyed, the tomb of the patriarchs in Jerusalem, in Hebron, was never destroyed. The building is fully intact as it was built 2,000 years ago. And unlike ancient structures like the pyramids of Egypt or uh, Machu, Machu Picchu in Peru or uh, the temples of Cambodia, there's incredible ancient buildings all over the world. So I'm not knocking the other ones, but you, what is unique about this structure is that, that every single day since it was built 2,000 years ago, Jews, Christians, and Muslims have been praying at this building every single day. It's been a continual house of prayer and focus of physical presence and prayer for 2,000 years, not an abandoned pyramid somewhere that was rediscovered centuries later but actively prayed it and focused prayer for thousands of years. So it's an incredible structure. When you go there, you stand at the walls of the Machpelah, you look up and you see it's in its full glory of what parts of the, if the Western Wall had continued up and not been destroyed on the top, you would have had the same uh, design, the same structure, the temple, Mount, in fact, is exactly 10 to 1 larger, built to scale from the tomb of the patriarchs in Hebron, okay? Hebron, Hebron. So when you come to Hebron, you feel a connection. It's the earth, the earth. Now, what does that mean? You know, when Abraham lived there, Avraham Avinu, he came from ancient Iraq and he made his journey through Shechem and through Jerusalem, but he ended up in Hebron. He lived in Hebron. And when his wife, Sarah, dies, according to the book of Breshit, the book of Genesis, he's heartbroken. Where am I going to bury but my beloved wife, Sarah? According to the Midrash, the extra biblical commentaries, he's searching for a calf. That goes up. Remember, they were all shepherds or cowherders in those days. And the calf wanders into a cave and he goes in there and he smells something incredible. It has the essence of the Garden of Eden. The essence, the smell, it smells like the entryway to the Garden of Eden. Petach Gan Eden. Petach Gan Eden. The portal way to the Garden of Eden. He smells, and it turns out upon further 
exploration that Adam and Eve are buried there. Adam and Eve are buried there, and it's maybe metaphysical or literal, a portal way, not the Garden of Eden itself, but some kind of access point to the essence, to the pet dock, to the opening, the gateway to the Garden of Eden. Okay, so Abraham says, of course, this is where I have to bury my beloved wife, Sarah. Of course, I want to bury her. Here. Oh, but who owns it? Oh, it's owned by Ephron the Hittite. Now, Abraham offers to pay for it. Ephron says, no, I'll give it to you for free as a gift. Abraham Avinu, our father Abraham, insists to pay for it. And in the end, he's given this high price, 400 silver pieces. When he pays for that, that in essence, that transaction is recorded in the book of Genesis. And that is our deed, Jewish people's connection to the Holy Land. All of the Holy Land, even before Jerusalem, is based on a connection to this spot in Hebron, the cave of Machpelah. So the cave existed there. Abraham buries Sarah, and then years later, he himself leaves this world. According to the Torah, who comes to bury their shared father in, Abra in, in Hebron, in the tomb of the patriarchs? Isaac and Ishmael actually come together. Ishmael, maybe he wandered off to Beersheba, maybe he wandered all the way to Mecca, according to the Muslim tradition. When he heard his father died, he came and he made peace with his brother Isaac. And the two of them buried their shared father, Abraham, Ibrahim. So, till today, we have the brothers, the brotherly connection brotherly passion and maybe even brotherly jealousies okay and a bit of brokenness and woundedness and also that shared love and passion for the our shared father Abraham okay in Hebron Isaac and Rebecca his wife later buried there Jacob and Leah also their bones brought out of Egypt they were also buried reburied in Hebron, and ever since then, their tomb became known as the Tomb of the Patriarchs. And it was that was about 3,800 years ago, 3,000 years ago, King David gets anointed as King of Judea, not at the Tomb of the Patriarchs, but there's actually, and I took a group there today, at the very top, you walk to the Tel Hebron, biblical city of Hebron, you'll find there the tombs of Ishai, Beirut, Jesse, and Ruth, and the ancient biblical city of Hebron, where actually Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob lived in ancient times. And when you go there today, there's also an incredible place that you can connect to, which is the tomb of Ishai and Ruth, Ruth the father and great-grandmother of King David. Because as you know, right, Ruth outlived her husband Boaz and Mary very likely could have lived to the time of, of, of King David and ends up being buried in Hebron, the biblical city. Now, Hebron, earth connection, Hebron, connecting heaven and earth, connecting the, the, to the prophets. When we, as Jews, pray, we say, Elohei Abraham, Elohei Yitzhak, Elohei Yaakov, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. When you're in Hebron, you feel each level has a different level of understanding, a different level of, of a connection, each of the forefathers. You're literally there and connecting with all of the deepest, deepest levels of connection. Now, Yitzhak Marmerstein mentioned when Rabbi Shlomo Gorin liberated in Jerusalem the Temple Mount, right, and the Western Wall, do you know of the entire Holy Land, the first place he went directly from the Kotel, the next morning, 
was to the Tomb of the Patriarchs in Hebron and flew an Israeli flag there. So when he flew that flag there, that was the first time in 700 years that we Jews could actually go in on top of the building of the Tomb of the Patriarchs because we had been forced by the Mamluks, the Ottomans, the British, and the Jordanians well, we weren't there in Jordan times, to only, we could only pray at the seven steps, which is on the outside of the building. There were steps leading up to the entrance on one of the entrances, and Jews were only allowed up to the seventh step. So the first thing that they allowed Jews to pray in the tomb of the patriarchs, meaning the building up on top, okay, of the tomb of the patriarchs, so the first time in 700 years, we had the right to go inside. So when we got up inside, okay, everyone wanted to know, when you go in the building, it's actually today divided between a Muslim entrance and a Jewish entrance. Since the story of Baruch Goldstein in 1994, it's been separated, Jewish and Muslim entrance, okay? On the Muslim side, are the Hall of Isaac, the tombs, the symbolic tombs of Isaac and Rebecca. On the Jewish side, the tombs of Jacob and Leah. Abraham and Sarah is actually accessible from both the Jewish entrance and the Muslim side. Um, so when you go on the Muslim side, um, could actually, do I have time or is my time uh, running out? How's my time, uh, Eva? Eva, you're yeah, five you're more live. minutes is good. Five more minutes, okay. So okay. I just want to point out that when you go in on the Muslim side, there's an ancient uh, a, there's a stone circle in the ground, okay? A huge stone circle, okay? And... Uh, everyone was always wondering what's down in that circle. Okay, there's a stone circle that we call the Petach Ganet. It's the opening way of the Garden of Eden from up atop. It's a stone circle that's right on the edge of the mosque and right behind Abraham's tomb. So everyone was always wondering, what is down there? Is there actually physically, archeologically speaking? Is it just legends? Is it in the Bible or is there literally a tomb of Machpelah, a double burial cave. So when, when the Israeli army came back in 1967, this is a few months later, 1968, everyone was, the generals tried to send the Israeli soldiers down this hole, but they couldn't fit because their shoulders were too wide to fit down there. So a daughter of one of the Israeli generals, her name was Michal, a 12-year-old girl, okay? She was the daughter of one of Moshe Dayan's generals. She says, I'll go down. I want to make my daddy proud, right? When my wife hears me tell the story, she said, it's a good thing that Michal's mother wasn't there. She would never let her girl to go down that hole. But it was all the generals around, and uh, she wanted to make daddy proud. So they lower her down in a rope, and they say, if there's no oxygen down there, pull the rope, and we'll yank you out, Okay. Bit of a risky move, but she went down nonetheless. She describes going through a tunnel. At the far end of the tunnel, there's stone steps leading up. The stone steps lead up to a, a stone uh, entryway, and it's blocked. So she gets to the top, and she knocks three times. Knock, knock, knock. Three times. She's terrified when she hears three times knocking back. It turns out an Israeli soldier was standing there and she runs out in panic. She, he said, I thought Abraham was coming to say hello. So I went knock, knock right back. This was in 1968. So they discovered a tunnel network underneath the building. There had been legends of an Ottoman sultan who loses his sword down the that hole in previous eras, okay? None of his soldiers made it out alive, kind of like raiders of the lost ark, right? Wow. There have been... Graffiti from the Knights Templars that they discovered down there. So we know that the mystics from the Crusader times had also been down there. 
So all of the mystics were trying to discover the secrets of the Machpelah, the entrance to the Garden of Eden. No one really knew. So this girl goes down in 1968. She leaves, there's a tunnel structure, but still no evidence of a Machpelah, a burial cave. 1981, okay, you with me? 1981, six men are praying in a big group of religious Jews, Anenu, right? On the days leading up to Rosh Hashanah, Slichot prayers before the Jews. The Muslim guard who always sits usually at the stone entrance on top of this stairway that leads into this tunnel network right behind the tomb of Isaac in the mosque, which we call Ohel Yitzchak, which the Muslims today is their main mosque. Okay, the Muslim guard is always sitting there day and night. There's no way they could ever go underneath him. But one day he says, oh, it's Slichot, the Jews are here. My morning prayers for the Muslims don't start until an hour and a half later. I'm going to go to sleep. And they notice that he goes to sleep and they say, oh, this is a good opportunity, but we don't have tools. Let's see if he does it again tomorrow. Sure enough. They leave, the Muslim guard leaves and he comes back. They come back the next day, including one of them is Noam Arnon. He's someone I met with just today. He's one of the founders of the Jewish community of Hebron and the spokesman of the Jewish community. Very special, learned guy. He wrote an incredible book, it's in Hebrew, about the Machpelas, this thick, about all of the eras of history from ancient times through today, all of the legends, it's all in there. Machpela, okay? So they go, they notice that the Muslim guard had gone to sleep. They come with hammers and chisels and they get to work. They open up that stone entrance all, and instead of trying to squeeze down on the other side of the hall, that remember that stone circle that the soldiers couldn't fit in, they simply walk down the stairs that this girl Mahal had discovered through the tunnel way, end up under the room which is right behind Abraham's tomb, which is usually where candles, three candles, by the way, are put down and up every day, even by the Muslims, they put candles up and down, acknowledging the holiness of the place, okay? And they get underneath there and there's no evidence. It's great, they discover a tunnel network, but where is the cave itself? Until somebody notices, their candle goes out, there's a breeze, there's air, where is the air coming from? They have no idea. They look down at the bottom of the tunnel and they notice there's some loose rocks. They pull out the loose rocks and guess what? It's a passageway to another room. They crawl in on their elbows, literally through cobwebs, Raiders of the Lost Ark style, okay? In, in modern times, this is in 1981. And guess what they discover? Not just one, but a double chambered burial cave. In other words, exactly what the Torah says should be there is what they find in person. Can you imagine the goosebumps? Can you imagine the excitement to be in that cave? Can you imagine? And guess what? At the far end of the cave, which where they couldn't crawl anymore, there was actually breeze coming from somewhere. Perhaps God Aden, Petach Gan Aden. Okay, now the Muslims were trying to get back to the building. They yelled from up above. The, the, they said down below through that stone circle. They were now below the stone circle and underneath that in the cave structure, they say, hurry up, the Muslims have come back. There's a near riot. It's time to get out. So they rush out. They go through the, tu the, the tunnel. They go up the stone stairs. They put the stone entrance back. They put the carpet back. The Muslims rush in. Uh-oh. What, what happened here? Everything looked the same, but uh-oh, somebody left a chisel with soil on it behind. The Muslims figured where they'd been. The Muslims fig figured out where they'd been. It was a near riot. Israeli ar archaeological authority says, listen, we admit we were down there. We weren't there to desecrate Jewish, our ancestors, the Abraham's bones, right? Or the bones of the prophets, maybe, who, or, or later eras of history that were buried on top. We were there to explore and just to document the existence of the Mahmela. And they do. Now, they tell the Muslims, we're going to come back as a second day. We're going to bring the Muslim leaders with us together. And they do a joint survey. 
1981. And that is till now we have video footage, we have sketches. And when they leave that second day, they, the army agrees to cement that internship for the sake of keeping the calm and the peace, okay? So that is what happened in 1981. And never has another person been down there since 1981. I want to add that our tradition teaches that when a soul leaves this world, he first comes to this spot at the entrance of the Garden of Eden before ascending to the next world, okay? And if you go now and go to that stone circle on the 10 days for Israelis and Jews, and it's open for us on Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Passover, and Sukkot, and 10 holy days when the Hall of Isaac becomes our synagogue, if you reach down and you smell the air coming out of the entrance to the garden, if until this day, you'll notice you put your hand there, there's still that breeze coming through, and it's an incredible smell unlike anything. It's almost like you're, you know, you don't need uh, psychedelics or drugs or anything. You just smell that air from the Garden of Eden and you're connected to the Garden of Eden. So my prayer is may all of us reconnect heaven and earth. May we connect with Chevron, connect with our element of earth within ourselves, with the holy earth that's in the holy land and especially the holy city of Hebron. And may we connect with our essence that is also connected with the Garden of Eden, with the Petah Gan Eden, the opening and passageway to the Garden of Eden, literally is in Hebron, and it's also something that we can connect with in our own and unique journey in this world. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Thank you so much. Leo, that was wonderful. And um, I thank wonder... you, Austin, so much, Elio. Yeah, it was great. Yes. Can, I, can, I, can I say something I, about and, Hebron? And I invite you guys to come with me on any of my, yes. my journey. Yes, let's do a tour. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Please, please. I, I want to just. Bye -bye. I want to say from experience that Petach Ganeden that's open with the little reshet, if you put your head down there and you smell it, I know I've done it a few times. I can't move for hours. It's so powerful. So I totally understand what you're saying. And may we all be able now in the future to smell this, all of us, and to expand the Ganed in there. And we, wish, we should make a tour with you. So let's, let's find a time maybe when, when all our friends from Europe are coming. <laughs> yes, yes. From yes, America. Yes. Bakasha. Thank Bakasha. you, Leo. Bakasha. No, thank you, Leo. Can I, can I say something just that came up to me about Hebron? Hebron is a, it's an interesting word because you can, uh, you can analyze it in all kinds of ways and uh, it always comes out very appropriate to the essence of what it is. Because first I thought Hebron, like it means friend, strength, so, or might kind of Hebron. So it's like a friend that has strength for you. It's also chavron, means like you owe happiness, chavron. Uh -huh. And, uh, and uh, yeah. Chavron, chavron. Chavron, yeah, it's like chavron. you owe you owe happiness. <laughs> you have to be chavron. happy. Yeah, chavron. chavron. <laughs> yes. It's like you owe it to yourself to be happy. You want to go into heaven, you owe it to yourself to be happy. You have to be happy first. You can't go to heaven before you're happy. You have to be, you know. By the way, um, uh, Eli, I was just your tour guide. If I just I wanted to uh, mention something. Uh, there was an archaeological dig a number of years ago um, in preparation for the expansion of the Jewish, um, you know, of the Jewish uh, presence. Uh, and my cousin had been the chief archaeologist and he had written the book. Maybe you're familiar with that. I don't know. Um, anyway, whatever. Um, Okay, thank you so much, Ben. We want to hear from you too. I'm, I'm understanding from Esther that Rav Greenberg is here. I was waiting for him to come in. Esther, is he there from Tzvat? Hello, hello. Otherwise, Amrita will sing. Uh, just understood he has to leave in 10 minutes. Oh, there you are. Shalom, Rav Greenberg. I thought hello, you were with us. 
Shalom from Tzfat. It's very important that you share with us. Thank you so much for being there. So I just met Rav Greenberg a few days ago, and he has an, an amazing um, big Knesset potential for the third temple in Tzfat in the Holy City. And he's going to share his feelings about or his knowledge of the Torah and the Zohar about the Holy City and his vision for the third temple. God bless you. Thank you. The floor is yours. Uh, she said the floor is mine, but I'm in spot, so we don't have <laughs> floors in spot. As you know, everybody is flying in the air. There's not so much ground here at all. And it was the last thing on my mind to ever be in a city like this. But mm -hmm. turns out that I'm a Levite and it's a city of refuge. So uh, my history uh, in terms of winding up here was that I had bought the house in the old city of Jerusalem where the Uriah Kodesh was born. And uh, in the early 80s, the Orchheim Synagogue um, was part of my house. I didn't know that. And I had everybody in Yerushalayim there you know, from the Nachlaot to the Kubalim, so to speak, in the late 70s, the early 80s, Rabbi Getz and Rabbi Tias and everybody started learning Kabbalah and the, the people who were about Baal as Americans who had brains of neuroanatomy um, asked me to get involved because I'm an exercise physiologist by trade. So they asked me to start to uh, help them um, they were learning the Eitz Chaim and asked me if I would teach them their own anatomy and physiology to understand some of the things there. So that's how I got a little bit involved in there and uh, a little bit of uh, understanding when I came to spot of um, what some of the people here were involved in. But um, my destiny was to wind up here. Um, I came here during the war seven years ago. Um, <clears throat> And um, I had three daughters that were going to Holy Sharon to school there. So I was a rabbi in Boca Raton, Florida for many years, and in Aventura in Florida. And, and uh, so I made Ali off for the third time. And I had lived in Badayim, which is near Hebron. I had lived in Bet Shemesh, and I lived in the old city of Yerushalayim. So obviously, um, Hashem sent me up to Tiberia to spend uh, two months living on the canary there during the war, with, uh, you know, with, uh, with, uh, in Gaza, when they were shooting the rockets, I came in, I went to rent a house in Zekron Yaakov, and my wife said, no, you're not going there because the rockets are going to come there. So anyway, so I wound up in spot. Someone gave me a house there, and uh, I was helping raise money for the community. Um, mm. So at first, my, my, as soon as I got the spot, I saw people who were crazy walking around with no clothes on, all kinds of different things. And then I was just laughing. There were no addresses. You couldn't find anything. And then one day, one day, mm. I saw um, Shababo and uh, the story of Sadiq Levan, uh, the, of how the city basically uh, survived the catastrophe is there was a real tzaddik that lived there and uh, the synagogue. Um, so I, I met him in person and he learned with me. Uh, the Ben Shai, he was a relative from that family. But that was a, one of my first real experiences to meet an indigenous being of Sfat. And I would go there early in the morning and dive in nets and just sit and learn with somebody who's family, it was the oldest family from Svat, and he um, had the feeling of somebody that was a real person that had balance and knowledge and humility and uh, grace, and just to look in his eyes and to see the truth. So I uh, became part of that, uh, of that minion, which was all the, uh, the real people of Svat. And, uh, you know, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, you know, these type of holidays, um, I felt I was really part of something bigger than myself. And uh, it was a very simple place, you know, it's the, the synagogue is very old, they never rebuilt it. And then 
just walking through the old city in Spot and uh, the, the Abu Hab synagogue, the, you know, just to see these places and to feel the energy. It's not like walking through Yerushalayim, which is very fast and very Arab, you know, Arabic. Sfat is just one plain um, refuge, and you don't feel anything from the outside world at all. As there's nothing, nobody speaks about anything other than being in Shabbos, on Shabbos, and basically everybody says hello to you and bows down and recognizes. I know, uh, you know, and and says hello to you with their eyes and you know everybody knows each other to some degree it's a very small place but you feel a certain love and a certain passion that's uncanny and the music that goes on there on Matsu Shabbos and everybody's free to walk their own path there you know everybody's there from every different culture the Chinese you know I mean, uh, in my synagogue that I have the Chinese, the ambassadors come here to sit and learn, they come to St. Christopher, you know, where I'm located is right on top of the mikvah. But, uh, you know, I'm definitely in an established uh, place with a, um, a Rosh Hashiva that uh, has a yeshiva there and I have students and whatever. But the bottom line is I'm there. I'm, I feel, I feel that I'm in the third temple because I'm a Levite and and uh, it's like a, being a Levite in Sfat is like a divining rod because I could be, I could buy another house in Jerusalem, I could be anywhere. But I feel, and now I know for sure that the Shechina is exactly where I am. And um, recently I took pictures and I know when the 45 died last year is I took pictures of the Shechina leaving Amaron and going into the valley where the Yavi was. So I realized that they were going to gather eventually in spot, which Maron basically is closed. You know, I don't know if you know, they're fighting over there during Black Bohemia. But they all came to me this year, including uh, my beautiful new friend, um, to feel the energy because I made a space um, where people can come now and feel. So to tell you uh, in five words or less, I was at Woodstock and I felt the gathering, I was pulled there. So the same thing here, I feel this magnetic kind of pull that there's no choice because, uh, you know, that's where the Shechina is right now. And there's going to be a gathering, people are going to feel it, they already do, and then we're going to go to Yerushalayim and we'll have all the Shefra in the world and we'll have the Divine Providence, the Ashkach and uh, Netz Hashem. And uh, just one thing I wanted to note is that a number of years ago, what I'm telling you is you don't know because I was there and I saw it is that some friends of mine were on Mount Zion and they called me because there was an earthquake and uh, Kevin with King David is actually buried, opened up. And I personally saw it and Netanyahu came with all the soldiers and they, um, <clears throat> they guarded up the thing, the place so nobody would see on the cover of David and Mela. And the reason why I found out <laughs> they sold the property to the Vatican, and that's why at Shavuos last year they closed the gates and they wouldn't let the Jews up on Shavuos last um, Shavuos. I don't know if you know that the Jews have been gathering on Mount Zion for many, many years. And uh, my rabbi, Rabbi Goldstein, well, Chai Goldstein was the Rosh Hashiva up there. And last year they didn't. The reason why is that they sold out the property to the Vatican. That is a terrible thing. And if the Jews knew that King David's tomb was really there, they would riot to get the property back. How do you sell the property of King David's tomb to the Vatican? So this is something that the Jews don't know, but I know. So, um, and so Rabbi Goldstein, uh, the Mikubalim of Yerushalayim came to him and he had uh, told me, it's the last year of his life, he would only learn with me on Shavuos. Um, he told me this, that, um, that we first, before the temple could be built, is that we first have to rebuild Mount Zion, something up there where the engineers are going to be, a hotel, whatever it is, but we need an infrastructure. And I was working with him in order to create um, a vision that we both had together, is that in 1983, uh, Rabbi Getz, who is the Rav of the Kotel, so he invited me to dominate with him inside the hotel, only the Bia and the Kahan could go. 
And that was the closest person, a uh, human person, to the Kadosh Kadoshi in that year. And I basically was taken up to see what the third temple would actually look like. And what I saw, I basically saw holograms. I saw, you know, letters, OTO, that turned out to be very similar to what the Shita of the Ramak, Moshe Kodavero, was talking about. And that he was the future of um, Kabbalah. He was the future of what the third temple would look like. And I went into a, a world to make holograms and I was working with um, Kachmaka, who was the famous photographer there to make a, basically a center with lasers um, yeah. and using the shita of the Moshe Corvero's uh, book to create, um, to show people the actual kavana in, uh, in a dimension, which was called Hakika Otio, which is Sefa Bialya. Bordown was the lost art of how we um, had the bua. So that's what I've been working on now is that uh, the concept of virtual reality as a way to teach all people the, uh, the intricacies of what's called the Torah of the Atik Yomim from the Itra Rabba in order to give people a dimension of uh, accessibility to um, instantaneous um, Tikkun. And uh, that's what we've been working on. And uh, that uh, piece that uh, Facebook just bought now was actually an invention of mine in, in, the, in the 80s in uh, Massapequa, Long Island, um, with the holograms, what they call it now, the Oculus Quest. But it's basically virtual reality. And uh, this kind of technology is very accessible to be able to put the Torahs that we need to give us the ability to develop the muscular structure inside the center of the third eye in order to hold these um, very, very specific, what we call kavanot, in order to access the level of the Torah of the times of Mashiach. So the Ben Shai brings this down in Parshish Kitzava very clearly that what Mashiach is is not 358, but 3 dot dot 58, because Ozin, but Ozin, it's 58 and 58, and it says the Pasik that Hashem also sees in here. And the Ramchal explains in chapter 52 in Piskei Chachma that the, the secret of orienting all the sphere to face each other is called Aliyat Ahavim. Aliyat is Emet and Ahavim is 58. So that's where the third eye goes, which is love. So it's Ozen, Ozen, Ahavim. So this is really the kavana of the Tikkun of Tam Shiach, and this is one of the pieces that we wanted to give over to Klai Israel using the virtual reality and where anybody could put this type of bracelet on Titzaver, it's the technology of, of the Kohen Gado, and this was um, you know, revealed to us for the time we live in right now. And everybody understands coding today, so it's very simple. It's just an ATM, but instead of using your fingers, you use that muscle inside of your third eye in order to hold the letters and it notches inside there, produces the clarity and the Ruch HaKadosh. So that's what I wanted to say. So I wish everybody the most incredible bracha to get ready for Shavuos and Mitz Hashem. Um, you'll be able to access my new book and the website and all this technology and those of you who make it up to spot where you'll be able to uh, mm. handle the new technologies that will have set up uh, Klai Israel to be able to be able to do this. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Could just you respond the website? Yeah. Just to respond to what was written, um, with the technology, we also need purity. The technology that the rabbi was related was um, sharing when he was talking just now is the technology is the, of the Atik Yomim. The Atik Yomim is a um, form of Torah that has been considered a lost art. It was something that the sages were very much involved in, but mainstream hasn't been so involved in. And it's where the words and their associated gematria, their numerical value, are used in unique configurations to recode the mind in alignment with redemption. And so the manifestation in this, in the world right now of technology, as in the technology that we're using in all different ways, is simply a manifestation of 
um, metaphor for the way in which our minds work. And so the purity of the Torah, the Atik Yomim, enables us to really develop technology. Technologies that we have now are kind of technologies, but what we're going to be stepping into are light-based, from the Ohagenus, coherent light-based technologies that are completely distinct to the technology that we use now. These technologies support what it is to be in complete alignment with the wisdom that we receive directly from Kodesh Baruch Hu. We have a built-in guidance system, Ruach HaKodesh, the ability to know exactly what to do, what to say, how to act in any given moment, because we've given over how what we consider to be our own version of reality, what we take ourselves to be, we give it all over to Hashem. And in that way, we're no longer relying on our own version of reality because it's been very clear over the last years that we have no idea what's going on. Again and again, we give it over and we receive the exact wisdom that is necessary in the moment. So the Ozen Ozen Ahavim that the rabbi just gave everybody, that particular technology that was given by the Benish Chai is a form of the Atik Yomim and is the configuration of Ruach HaKodesh, that we listen with ears, we listen to each other, that we have deep listening. And in that way, there is the listening of, our, of the third ear. The third ear that where the seats was placed, the, um, the Kohen Gadol, he wore a gold band for the receipt of divine communication. So inside of our own being, we have this technology. And the seats is placed across, across where the third eye or the third ear would be. And that is the voice of Hashem, of God. And we know that it's Hashem speaking to us, and we know that it's Ruach HaKodesh coming through because it feels like love, Ahavim. Ahavim is also the matri of 58, just like Ozen, Ozen, Ahavim. And they are, these are the 358s of the Mashiach technology, the ability to know what to do, know what to say, know how to act in any given moment because we're receiving it directly from Shemayim and it feels like love. Mm. And that is the purity of who we are, all of us. We're all originally pure. There's nothing we need to fix. And so the technologies that come now are the technologies that support us in this level of Ruach HaKodesh. Amen. Amen, amen. Um, that was spectacular. I loved it. Thank you so much. I'm going to put your website on in the chat. And, and I recommend everybody to uh, check out and their vision of a multimedia synagogue, a Kabbalah Center, and it's going to be amazing. So please stay tuned, and we might do a, a, a Zoom just for that later in the future. Thank you so much. And um, we want to hear more. And also, we know you have songs, so we want to hear them too. Um, <clears throat> and now we're going to move into Tiberias through the song of Miriam, and we have two women who have songs for that. And um, <clears throat> from Tzfat's beautiful Shrina energy into the water element. So <clears throat> Amrita, if you wanna share with us from Sweden, thank you for coming in and blessing so much. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. So good to so see good you. To see you. Hi, good to see you too. I'm glad to be here. I, yes, um, I was not sure what to bring, and uh, it kind of, it's beautiful because uh, I, by listening to all of you, right, I heard that Jonathan and um, also some of the other speakers, they were. They were talking about the element of water huh? and that lost uh, fluidity a little bit that we have uh, 
what we've lost that that fluidity that property right of that uh, water so it's a uh, uh, it's beautiful because uh this song came like that it was pure water pouring through it was like a pure light liquid water i call that when something pours through and uh, it came with with a very simple tune um I was barely following just my hands. The lyrics came through too. And um, it's finally a song to Mary. Uh, I've never done a song to Mary before. Uh, I was literally weeping after it finished. And I have never shared it with anyone. Um, and in the last week I started, uh, it came back. I started singing it again because it, it, it stayed somewhere where it was not reachable and it came back <laughs> and I, I started laughing because I thought it was lost. <laughs> so I wrote it down very uh, quickly and uh, you know how our minds go now. Uh, we are still not in that uh, oneness uh, where everything is accessible at all times. and. Uh, where as someone very beautifully was saying we are already in that Eden where we don't need any more teachers or our minds are not in forgetfulness. We are, it feels like we are dense now. Huh? We need to write things just to access them. This song came as a beautiful drop of that, right? You don't need to write, you don't need to hold it. So even if I had to write it, it came as a proof somehow something there. Uh, it reminds me also of um, something they were saying about the Hawaiians. I read somewhere. It felt very beautiful because they call them the water people. And um, in, the Hawaii, in Hawaii, it's been known that uh, they don't have telephones. They, some of these people don't never use the technology or anything. It's like that, that Technology, the highest technology is consciousness. Huh? So we are, our technology beautifully, like what they said now, it's, it's coming very close to that, right? It's now mimicking, it's ready to help us maybe reach that, which is a very beautiful metaphor. But they knew all of a sudden they will all move at the same time, maybe like 40, 50 people, they will walk somewhere in the island without knowing why or what. They would just know, they would get up and start walking towards somewhere and then they would find that people there were needing them. So only when they arrived, they would know the reason for them being there and they just, they just would follow and help them. That would happen all the time. That is being in that fluidity, right? In that, uh, that uh, other mind uh, that doesn't need to know, but knows. Uh, what better to call it than the Shekhinah or that welcoming that Shekhinah, that feminine face of God that I call, I like to call. Uh, welcoming that feminine essence inside of all of us that, that we're longing, right? That marriage of heaven and earth. Uh, I, I sing this song now. It's in Spanish and wow, I, I need now, I, I realize I need to translate it. Um, so I will read it if you allow me to. A flower in your hair, your essence in the air, all whispers your name simply when you see or when you can see. Um, a thousand poems in the air recite your name. Now I understand, full of grace you are among all women. He arrives and lifts the veil, your king. Today the promise of this time is fulfilled. There's a ring on your finger of peaks or of mountains huh? and stars. And in your hair, the wind whispers all the poems of the earth. Maria Sofia, Maria Sofia. There is a goldfinch on your chest and a rose in your geometry where the blue color of thunder is born in the night that remembers your name. 
within the constellation of your skin and the lost memory of your bare feet on the ground opening the footprint in your path or along your way there are suns and deserts longing for your presence waiting to become once more gardens I'm alluding to the Garden of Eden <laughs> and sighs where our essence rests waiting to hear your name Maria Sofia Maria Sofia Maria I'm making a word of place in Spanish because mm -hmm. if you divide my Ma Mary Maria Maria that happened to me once I, I was in a meditation and I started breaking down words without meaning to and it came Maria 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 Amor Mar y Amor Ocean and Love uh, and uh, Sofia hmm? Sal Salt and um, Wisdom so I sing it now. Mm. Is there time? Yeah, I'm. I'm hoping. I'm not taking too too much time. No, no we're waiting for you. you. Uh, yes. So, so we are printing. Songs. Eva, Eva, you are echoing. Mm -hmm. You're echoing. echoing. Oh, really? Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Am I echoing? Am I echoing? Am I? No, echoing? no, you're not. You're, you're fine. fine. You're fine. Just. Esperando volverse 
jardines y suspiros donde nuestra esencia descansa esperando y tu nombre María Sofía It's not quite finished, but I got it to that point, and I thought it was perfect to share it today. So I bring it to all of you. Maria is part of Miriam, in a way. And then if you have energy after Ben to share one more, if you're tired, that's great. We also have Meira has a song for Miriam. Um, I know you waited a long time, Amrita. I love your songs. And um, I think you have also a song about um, Ima Dama, if you have the energy to sing it later, um, if you have the time, but we'll see. Ben Melo, Molov has um, been patiently waiting. And Meir, are you online after that to hear you? Okay, so Ben, we're waiting. He's coming in interluding now from Yerushalayim. Uh, he wants to share his feelings about the holy city of fire. Thank you. Um, first of all, the background you see is not Jerusalem. I am in Jerusalem, but it's a, a background from Bar Ilan University where I teach uh, political science and conflict resolution with an emphasis on a Jewish, Arab, and religious dialogue. And um, I'd like to share just some thoughts about um, spirituality and um, relationships with our cousins uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, no. If I think about... Uh, we cannot hear you. Oh, one second. I have my... Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, fine. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, as um, you see, the background that I have um, is, not is not Jerusalem, even though I'm in Jerusalem. It's the background is a Bar Ilan University, where I teach political science and conflict resolution, with an emphasis on um, interreligious and intercultural approaches to dialogue between Jews and Arabs. Um, when I think about um, Jerusalem and special moments, um, we um, most of us are Olim who've come from abroad. And a rabbi once um, had a, um, had a uh, wonderful interpretation of a verse from Mahalel, and we're coming to Yom Yerushalayim. Um, the verse is, Mi uh, lahar Hashem, umi yakom bimkom kacho, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall rise in his holy place. Um, it's one thing for us to come to Israel to make the effort to deal with all sorts of obstacles, and it's another once we're here to try and elevate um, elevate ourselves and elevate the world around us from uh, Jerusalem. Anyway, if I think about special moments, um, I think about two things. One is uh, for the last 20 years, I've been privileged to um, be serving as a volunteer uh, in the Religious Services Committee of Sharet Sedek Hospital in Jerusalem. And that hospital actually began uh, before Hadassah in the early periods of um, the early period, even before the um, modern Zionist um, uh, pioneering efforts. It was part of what was called the old Yeshuv, um, serving uh, Jews and Arabs, and uh, then eventually it grew up into uh, a major hospital. 
But as part of the Religious Services Committee, I've been uh, primarily had the responsibility of uh, making Kiddush in the different uh, departments and wards, um, Erev Shabbat. And uh, this involves um, gathering people together at the nurse's desk um, for Erev Shabbat, for uh, Kiddush in the, uh, in the morning. And um, it's just a wonderful privilege to, um, to intervene in, that, in those circumstances, to bring people out of their rooms, to um, talk with them a bit. It's more than the Shabbat ritual. It's more than even a bit of Onag Shabbat. It's even helping people get better. Um, if we can see religion as something not just limited to ritual, but something that really elevates us. And I think that's something that we as, um, we as um, those coming from abroad and bringing the wider perspective and um, certainly identify with. Um, there's a, just a connection that was interesting, one, one uh, association. Um, in Sharai Tzedek, they have, it's a religious hospital. So they have, um, they call them Katvaniot Shabbat. Um, non-Jews, mostly Arabs, uh, who serve in the wards on Shabbat and can do things uh, that the staff uh, cannot do. Um, you know, that involves a, um, a you know, Chilul Shabbat. Um, and um, you get to know the, the Jewish staff, the Arab staff, when you come and make Yiddush in the different wards and particularly when you try to make it into an experience of camaraderie. And um, the Arab staff had come to uh, expect, um, you know, Jewish volunteers or Jewish, um, you know, people on the uh, on the staff of the religious services committee to come and make the kiddush, etc. I remember a number of one particular time I had come to one of the wars that I had um, regularly made kiddushin, and uh, one of the Arab katvaniot uh, who I had, you know, got to know a bit, she said, Ben. Uh, last week, no one came. You know, how can this be? And I said, well, I promised to check into it. Uh, other experiences, uh, Hanukkah, lighting the candles for a group of people in the emergency room, um, you know, things that are so, uh, you think, mundane, but in a hospital setting, um, you know, and getting people to sing Mao Sur, where you have the, uh, you know, one, I remember one night in the emergency room, the eighth night of Hanukkah, you know, the brilliant lighting, etc. cetera. Um, so that's one association from Jerusalem. The other is um, the wall, Harabayat. Um, a number of times I had been um, uh, privileged to be on Harabayat as part of interreligious delegations. And uh, I always experienced Harabayat, the Temple Mount, as a place in which I just sort of um, absorbed this calm uh, spiritual energy, calm spirituality of immense, of immense power, power that I saw as just um, potent enough to bring people together, which requires immense power given the circumstances that we're usually in with between Jews and Arabs in Jerusalem and Israel, and for that matter, the Middle East. And, um, um, you know, uh, that type of, of vision that we have to maintain. Uh, once I was, um, a good number of years ago, I was in a situation on Friday, I had gone to the hotel. And then um, I remember just having to leave and I, I just got sort of mixed up in a crowd of Arabs who were coming, Muslims, Arabs, who were coming out of the Temple Mount, you know, the, um, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and then being sort of in the crowd and they're all wishing each other uh, in Arabic, may God accept your prayers, may God accept your prayers. That's their greeting in Arabic after um, prayers. And, uh, I, you know, the vision was, well, one day will we, will we be able to do that? Of course, um, this is a vision, um, but um, I think it's uh, something important, very important to hold on to. I had also Eliyahu McLean, who spoke about Hebron. He had led, uh, among other groups, uh, Jerusalem peacemakers, involved praying uh, in Jerusalem, praying together in Jerusalem, um, involved Jews, Muslims, Christians. And I had been a number of times involved with that, of praying at the uh, gates of Jerusalem. And it's like Building oh, Eliyahu, building the um, building that sort of temple in our minds, uh, little by little, uh, you know, one step at a time, like the bricks of the Western Wall, and then uh, finally, just to take us back to Bar Ilan, um, the last four years I've been running a um, course, um, Jewish Arab um, Jewish Arab interreligious dialogue. Uh, which uh, has been very, very successful in this past year. It was immensely successful with 49 students in a dialogue uh, uh, workshop course. 
uh, equally divided between um, Jews and Arabs. And uh, one of the sessions was each side's connection to the Holy Land. Normally we deal with uh, similarities between Jewish ritual, Muslim ritual, holidays, uh, Torah, Quran. Um, but this was about the mutual connection to the um, Holy Land. And there was a bit of tension in the group. Um, you know, we had come to something and may not have been, you know, totally a win-win uh, proposition. And uh, at least not in this, this time of our experience. And one of the Arab students, Arab Muslim students had talked about his vision of a place of Jerusalem bringing us all together. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so um, may we be privileged all in our own way, wherever we are actually, uh, because all roads lead to Jerusalem, whether you're in Hebron or Tzvan or Tiberias, <laughs> um, you know, uh, to um, um, air our little, our little stone, our little piece, uh, our little, um, our little uh, glimmer of light uh, to building that effort of um, the third temple mm -hmm. uh, spiritually, and then inshallah, God willing, uh, uh, physically together with um, the other people that we um, inhabit the land and the region with. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, Ben Malo. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Great. You guys are wonderful. Jonathan, so we're going to have Meira sing uh, and Jonathan, and then Amrita comes back again for more songs. I think it's so wonderful to have the essence of the cities, and now we have songs. We were supposed to have a poem too, but that will be next time, a poem for you, shall I? By a dear new friend, um, but that will be next time. So Jonathan and Meira, the floors are yours, or the Stage is yours. Who is ready? Okay, Jonathan, maybe you sing until Mira gets online. Do you have a song of um, Tiberias, Jonathan, or Yushalayim? <coughs> Tzfat, I don't know if there's many songs. Hebron. Yeah, now you can hear me now. Oh, yeah. Yes, finally. Okay. Oh, Laura. Yes. <laughs> Shalom from Paris. Laura. Shalom from Florida. And, oh, yeah. oh, you're Florida. <laughs> okay, Mira, did you want to sing? Can you hear us? Hello. Hello, give it. Ah, yeah. Shalom, Shalom. Hi, I had to go. Um, I'm trying to get set up because it's so late now in my home. Um, everyone is sleeping. <laughs> so I don't know if I can do this, but I will try. I do have a beautiful song. Can, can you see me? Because I don't see myself. Yes, we can. You do see me. Okay. Yes, so let's see. I'm, I'm out. Um, as you can see, I'm, I'm at a tree. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. Let's see. You're on the streets of Jerusalem. How perfect. I'm on the streets, but I have to put the phone somewhere to hold the guitar. So, okay. Sorry. I'm trying. It's gotten up. so late. It's so late here. I'm sorry. Maybe somebody else should go. Yeah. Jonathan can sing until you sit up. We, we usually hear more of Jonathan, but it's been a full evening. So our brother, mm -hmm. Jonathan, Come on. I think I just got it set. Here. I think I'm set up. Can, I don't know why I can't see myself. Well, we see you. We can see you. All right. Well, I'm on the streets of Yerushalayim. And can you hear this guitar? Yes. Are you singing the song of Miriam for Tiberias from Yerushalayim? I'm singing a, a song. Um, yes, I'm going to sing a song. And maybe all the people on the street now that are walking by will sing with me. <laughs> nice. All right. Come to the fountain of life giving water. Fountain of mercy, yeah. Fountain of grace, fountain of healing, life giving water. 
very short version of a song that I wrote and I don't know because I can't see myself I don't know if anybody can see me or how it sounds but it's all about coming to the fountain of the living water and as we awaken and transition from the old paradigm to the new paradigm it's nothing new it's just us realizing that we are carrying the living God in our vessels here on the planet. And like Rob Greenberg's, um, I don't know who she was, but we yes. are already whole. We are already perfect. We just don't realize so many things and we have to let go of the old programming and step into this fountain of living water. And I just wanna bless everybody and thank you. I'm sorry, this is a little short um, than what I really thought I would do, but. Um, I just thank you ever so much. And it's been a really beautiful presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mira, from your shalom. Thank you, Mira, Sam. Thank you so much. God bless. Yeah. Thank you. Lovely song. I'm beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So, Jonathan, um, if you want to sing some more um and uh, uh, I have some images I wanted to share, but the spirit Omar and then Amrita said she'll come back to maybe do another song. Anybody else wants to share? We're happy to hear from you. So, Jonathan. Okay, so I have, I have this song. It's uh, basically something that we didn't, uh, I, I didn't uh, hear it come up so much, but it's very, very important because our water in the world is uh, been uh, neglecting it in a very nasty way. All the plastic in the ocean and there's all these things. The water is not so uh, so clean as it used to be, not so pure. So this is a this is a very simple prayer just for the healing of the waters themselves. And um, 
It's in four languages. It's, uh, it has Spanish, Hebrew, English, and Arabic. And um, it just has two verses. So uh, I, I believe you'll understand it. <laughs> Dejamos para curar las aguas. A la vaga se da la altura. Nosotros dejamos para curar las aguas. A la vaga se da la altura. We pray for the healing of the water. We pray. We pray for the healing of the water. We pray the purity they hold. We call the lim, the effort of mine. We call the lim, the tamari mazakim. Thank you for bringing the element of water, how important mm -hmm. that is. Beautiful. Yonatan. Oh, yes. I'm so grateful every day. I, uh, I have all kinds of moments that I bless the water, whether I drink it or I wash myself or whatever. There's so much and uh, blessing in water connected, you know, connected. It's amazing. So, Yes. Also, really, all the elements, really. Yeah. Yeah. What gift God gave us is amazing. Yeah. Every day we should be thankful. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah, but particularly the elements, they just come up during the day, you know, pretty much. Like, uh -huh. Whatever you're doing, you're eating, you're drinking, you're washing your hands, you're taking a shower, you're breathing, breathing. you know. You're... <laughs> Gosh such gifts thank you wonderful wow so i'm going to share some images amrita if you want to share one more song or your wisdom anybody else we're, we're happy to hear 
Um, okay, so <clears throat> uh, in Sweden, I did, I was stuck during the pandemic two years ago, and I went by the rules of Israel because Sweden didn't keep any Corona rules, but whatever, I was kind of stuck in this Swedish cottage near Chabad. So I did every day uh, an image of the different spheres of the Omer, <clears throat> the Omer count, because they built up the tree of life and every week there's another sphere in relationship to other spheres. It's kind of a system that you, you count and then you also heal <clears throat> through these attributes of these tree of life spheres. Anyway, so this one is a little child who's holding the Torah. I did that um, in the beginning week. I don't have the actual sphere here. And um, it says, Ani gibor hamud katan. So I think it's beautiful <laughs> when we can receive God's gifts of the teachings of the Torah at an early age. And so it's kind of a whimsical presentation. That's one. I have many more. I'm just going to show you a few. This, I think, was Malchut Shebetif Eret. So it's the heart, Tiferet vibration, and the Kiseh Malchut. I did quite a lot of thrones that whole seven weeks. This one was Tiferet Shebenetzach. And I did a tulip. I'm crazy about tulips. So I put in also here the Luchot Abrit, the laws of mitzvot and things that can make us navigate better through life, through the Torah. And then the last one is Malchut Sheba Malchut. I need to finish that piece a little more. <clears throat> but um, here's um, an angel or righteous being downloading the new Torah. Every time Moshavot, we're getting <clears throat> a new teaching of the Torah. People are up all night and studying because, <coughs> excuse me, because it actually is a new Torah text coming down on an energetic level. That's why we can keep reading the Torah every year. Otherwise, it would be like a boring textbook of, of 3,000 years or more. So that's why each time you discover something else. So here I kind of depicted coming down from heaven, the Torah scroll. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was me for sharing some of my art. Now let's go back to music. <laughs> Thank you. All right, who wants to share or sing? If people have time and energy. Okay, I don't have much energy left, but I do a little one. <laughs> okay. Very sweet, sweet one, small one. Just to show my appreciation. I'm really <clears throat> grateful for holding you holding the space, Eva. I've always told you. And everyone who comes here and share. Thank you for you doing your work also. Maybe you can send the uh, website that you work on <coughs> in the chat. Yeah. Okay, I, I haven't finished this song actually, but I feel like singing it. And uh, it's just very simple what I have now. It's almost like the chorus, but I will sing it. And it's very appropriate to what we are, the topic today, I feel. It's, um, I did this to, to um, a, a morpho. A morpho is a butterfly, a, a species of butterfly from the jungle, that it's very beautiful. It's, it's big uh, and blue. Super Brian, I don't know, you probably know about them. They're this amazing blue and uh, they're gigantic. So every time that it passes through the jungle, it's like spirits telling us all is well. And or that is my feeling all the time. It's like magic. And uh, it reminded, it kept reminding me we are being born again. Um, humanity 
is being born and I feel it's in being born in that heart of nature. So it's uh, it's coming through all Ima Adama, through the mother, through through Gaia. So it's we are finally understanding we are all one. Everything is one. We are one with nature. We never left the garden. We never left paradise. It's just a state of consciousness. So let's go back to that right state, right view. And then we will see amazing things manifest. Uh, because matter follows that. And Gaia is, is waiting. She's at the door, at the gateway. <laughs> Okay, uh, this was to that butterfly, it's in Spanish and it's very simple, it just says, it just talks about the butterfly. Mm. And very funnily, uh, I compare the blue to um, blue water, blue air, blue, uh, blue earth, blue fire. So I found that that blue, it's in all the elements. Hold on. Oh. Mariposa azul, cántame, cántame. Oh. Hey. Mariposa azul, cántame, cántame. Azul mar, azul tierra, azul llama, azul cielo, azul mar, azul cielo, azul tierra, azul fuego, mariposa azul cántame, cántame, mariposa azul píntame. Los colores de la selva, con los colores, con los colores de la selva, espíritu del bosque. Mariposa azul, cántame, cántame. Mariposa azul, píntame. Píntame, azul cielo, azul mar, azul tierra, azul llama, azul cielo, azul mar, azul tierra, azul fuego. Bravissimo. Love it. You see. I love it. Can you please send me the, the lyrics? Uh... <clears throat> She's mute. You're muted. You want them now, Jonathan? Yeah, yeah just send me the lyrics. I'll put it in. I'll uh, have the recording also. No. Nice. <laughs> But yeah, just send me the lyrics. I have the uh, inspiration. I got also another song about Amazonia just the other day. So beautiful song. I'm learning how to play it now. It's very beautiful. I send you the link if you want. <laughs> it's uh, from some people very deep in the Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'd love to have the, the lyrics for this. I'm going to share it with some, some people. Um, Amrita, I'm sending this website for you. See if it's correct. The voice of Gaia dot work. <coughs> OK. Jonathan, anything else? Uh, are we coming to the end? Are we ending with Anna Bekoach or what are we? Yeah. Anybody else wants to share? Oh, you said Netta might. might. Maybe, yeah, maybe Neta Shira, Shira Neta. As I said, she joined us. And then, Nehmad, if you want to talk to her. Hey. 
Uh, I didn't think of anything. Um, just <laughs> want to say hello from Jerusalem. Okay, maybe I have something to share with you. Uh, I live in Jerusalem for uh, five years. Originally, I'm from the north of Israel. I uh, was raised in, in the area of Haifa. And I never imagined myself living in Jerusalem. Uh, the crowdiness. The, and yeah, I, I had some hard times uh, moving here at first. It was harsh on me. But now I feel like I can't live. <laughs> Um, I feel the fire. I, I want to say that I feel that living in Jerusalem, it's, we have to be connected to truth. There is no screens here. Um, I don't know how to, to explain in English, but everything is extreme, but everything is uh, total. <laughs> Um, uh, we don't have any discounts living here. If we live here, we have to, to work, to, <laughs> to have an inner work all the time. It's very intense, but it's, it has the holiness of, of it. It has this, the, uh, yeah, it's the, like the truth is, is here in the city. It's the heart of the world. Yeah. This is what I wanted to share. <laughs> Thank you, Neta. Thanks for your last nice name. Shira, Neta Shira. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Okay, so I guess. Um, We'll do um, Anna Bekoach, or we don't have Jacob with the piano tonight, but anything else? Uh, <clears throat> or you have, how about Kineret? I feel like we didn't give enough um, credit to Tiberias. <laughs> It's kind of a. Yeah, I think it's okay. We did we did a lot for for the water, huh? We put, we yeah, the water. Sang, we sang three songs for the water. Okay, I'm sorry. It's okay. I meant the Sea of Galilee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's a uh, very. It's, you know, I have um, something I want to share that uh, I, I've been thinking about it for a long time anyway, but just to, to to share my 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 thought about it is, is that um, after the 10 tribes of uh, of Israel were kind of lost then a few hundred years later this person called the Jesus came along and uh, and since then uh, the essence of, uh, of 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 ancient Israelism became exposed some of it you know became exposed to the rest of the world through christianity and then later through islam also and i think that um so this guy muhammad yeah and uh i think that uh part of the reason that it's happened like this is just to to be able to to recognize and reconnect to to these divine sparks that we're supposed to uncover and um, just putting putting the religious differences aside, it's, it, it doesn't matter so much. We're all aiming for this uh, this place of redemption, and we're talking about this uh, very holy place in the one that everybody wants to be, and everybody wants to go and find their pathway to heaven through it. And there's um, yeah, and just. Uh, Want us to keep an open mind regarding these things. Uh, we pray for it, you know, for that we all uh, we are all able to to open our minds to to what it is, to the essence, the truth of it, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I, I feel like I, it, we can play another koch, but maybe there is something else that. Uh, okay. As what did we do? What did what did we do today? We did we did the four elements, and. Um, 
did we actually sing a song for the earth? I don't think that we did, right? Or In Madama, we tried to do it. We can do this song that Shim, Shlo, um, Shimon left the does a lot. Um, what, at the Marvish Shamayim, but it's all different. Which one? Um, no, the Marvish Shamayim, it's all of them. It's all four elements. No, the, uh, Im, uh, it's also the one that the couple from Colorado does. Ima, Ima, Dama, you know that one? Okay. Venture, venture. Okay. But, um, oh, Pachamama by Shimon Levi. I have, I, have, I have a song for, the, for, for Earth. Okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, actually an interesting uh, it's a <clears throat> concept. Uh, it's an interesting concept because it's um, actually it's in a, an African language called Yoruba. And uh, the song is um, it's about father the father of the earth. Hmm. So instead of, because we were talking about a lot about mother earth, Ima Adama, and uh, she gets a lot of attention in our, in, our, in our reality. And it's beautiful, it's great, but not to forget that the earth is not a male or female, it's both, you know? <laughs> and the same thing in the same culture, in the Yoruba culture, they say Oshala is the mother sky. So mm. it's, it's good to, to remember that you can't really put a gender on the sky or on the earth. It's not, it doesn't really work. You know, it's like you, you can relate to a gender in the earth or the sky, but you can't label it like the sky is the father and the earth is the mother. No, it's both. Both are both. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so yeah, it's just a song about it. And, uh, the, the name is Babalu Aye. Babalu Aye is the father earth.
Bravissimo. Uh, should I translate? You want me to translate? Monif be babaluaye. I love you, babaluaye. Fun mi lelei egboki. Give me this herbal earth healing. Bawoni mosele de adugbo. Yi e yi e ni. How can I get to the one? Mole fihan e telemi kalo. Yi e yi e ni. I can show you. Come with me to the one. Wolewa uh, Oisha. Enter as Oisha. Oisha means um, a, a, a spirit entity. It's not a god. It's like, a, like an angel in a way. Oisha. And it's interesting because the word Oisha in Hebrew is like the light of a woman, you know, Oisha. <laughs> So it's a, it's very beautiful. It has a strong uh, strong essence, uh, and and most of most of the entities are are female. Mm -hmm. uh, but but the Father Earth, yeah, the the male of the Earth. Um, so Wolewa Oisha enter as Oisha, Wolewa Awa Oda, enter gratefulness. Wolewa awa umidungan. Enter us. We are very happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Beautiful. You're mute, Namita. Preciosa, Jonathan. Really beautiful. <laughs> gracias, gracias. Amrita, how is Sweden these days? It's uh, cold. It's big contrast. Mm -hmm. But the summer is coming in. Can't wait for that. So it's a little cooler. Huh? I yeah. bet it's very hot in Israel. Is yeah. it getting hot there? It's warmer? Not so, it's not so, so great. In the daytime, in the middle of the day, it's hot, but it's not too much these days. Not too much, okay. No, the, the, thing, the thing that's really interesting now is that there is a lot of uh, sand and dust and pollen. It's so much of it. And like every other day, the sky is like Food. brown, gray, beige, wow. uh, yellow, all kinds of, and it's really hardcore. And, and a lot of people have they and have allergies and they have reaction. allergies but not just i even I, I don't have allergies usually but you feel it's just congested it's just blocked you know it's too much yeah yeah it's very intense but uh, i think it's uh, here to give us some kind of grounding you know <laughs> <laughs> like we're physically connecting from the inside with the uh, the earth you know the dust you know wow the dirt yeah <laughs> Yeah. It's always like this every summer, or especially, no, especially no, this summer. Much, much more. This this one is the most intense I remember ever. Sure. Also, the, there were flowers blooming uh, much more than ever. In a lot of different flowers, they bloom for much longer period, so oh. they they like release a lot more pollen than usual. <laughs> and then there's dust storms at the same time that are happening. Mm. And it's just, it's intense. It's really interesting. <laughs> oh, I can yeah. tell. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's all over the country. But did you um, send me that? I, I didn't, I only got your website. I but, sent, uh, oh, I sent you, I sent you, Jonathan, direct message. Direct <laughs> message? Right? Okay. In the so chat. Ayala was gonna share a poem. I can she, share it on the on the. I don't know if she's still on. Okay. <laughs> so, I can place. Hold on. I can paste it again. Ah, I put the voice of Gaia on the chat. Was that right? Yes. yes. I will paste it again. Okay. <laughs> oh no, what did I do? <laughs> Hold on. Space. 
the bees. Uh, you wrote something about the bees? Yeah, I haven't seen so many bees in Tzfat. I don't know about bees in Tzfat, but I can tell uh, you this person in, uh, in the, close to Kirat Malachi, in a kibbutz somewhere, he's growing bees, but he's not growing them for the honey. He's just growing them so there'll be more bees in the world. It's so beautiful. That's and he cool. made these beautiful, amazing beehives that are made of wood, and, and they're just they're just so pretty. They look like this old wagon or something. It's beautiful, beautiful, so nice. And you can see he has these bees. He says that the bees, because the way, because of the way that he uh, relates to them, he doesn't steal honey from them. They never sting anybody there. They're so like they're so gentle and like accepting. You can just put your hand inside the hive, and they don't do anything. They can just maybe they'll get on your hand, maybe. But uh, they just don't, they're completely like friendly and sweet bees. It's just amazing. Amazing. Uh, yeah. You should see it now, Jonathan. Yes, I got it. I got it. It's getting copied right now. Spirit of the Bosque, 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 it's the forest, right? <clears throat> yes, forest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, I think here was an answer. Fuego Azul also, Fuego can be also as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, fire has blue too, huh? In it yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. When you turn gas on in your in your it's stove, like blue. It's blue, right? <laughs> Concentrated controlled fire is blue. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still have <clears throat> chemtrails in Sweden like last summer? <clears throat> yes, mm. unfortunately, it's uh, it's more and more. Mm. Um, it's very strange. Mm. It's like it's very obvious now the formations. It's like um, it's like squares all mm. over. So, I, I'm immediately my nose gets itchy. Um, it doesn't get itchy the rest of the time, so it's not allergy to flowers or to anything, because if not, uh, then I would have it all the time. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it gets really itchy after that for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we are we are feeling why, why there's so much, right? There are so very few people here where we live. So we're wondering what a waste. <laughs> it's, it's not even, it's not even a city. It's like what is the the, the need to do that here? Mm. So so I like to I like to say something about it because it's uh, been on my mind and I've been uh, practicing something with this what you're saying, and uh, I know that there is uh, there's the, it's not just necessarily chemtrails or. Uh, us polluting the world and the air being so contaminated in the last years more than ever. I think it's like already 20 years that we're feeling the air is not so clean and it's becoming worse. And, um, and part of it, sure, it's, it's probably some kind of chemtrails. I don't know what is the purpose really, what is the reasoning, but another part of it is probably the vaccines for Corona or whatever, other vaccines. There's all kinds of ways that there is chemical uh, interference with our field, with our, so I just, um, I, I want to give you guys a five second exercise with breathing. And then, uh, and then I want you to, to take it with you because it takes so, such a short time and just use it every day and put the consciousness when you're doing this exercise, it's a breathing exercise. So put the consciousness into it that you are, uh, uh, utilizing whatever chemicals there are 
as damaging as they're supposed to be for you, whatever it is, you have the power to do a vraque de bras to transform and manifest like the change of these chemicals into something beneficial for you because basically we are consistent of 100% of the minerals and chemicals and materials that there are on this planet. We are the most uh, elaborated kind of, uh, let's say maybe dolphins and, uh, and whales and, uh, and elephants maybe also, I don't know, but, but definitely we are consistent of every element that exists, every, every matter, every kind of matter that there is on the planet where we are also, we have some, so, so all we have to do is just to, to request our subconscious, our field, our body to transform whatever this energy is to, to, to work for us rather than hinder us or hurt us or, you know, so, okay. So the exercise is like this. You take a really deep breath to your chest and then you keep it in for a second. You, you expand it as much as you can. And then you exhale only from your belly, leaving your chest as elevated as you can. So you exhale, but you leave your chest elevated. And then you take a second breath, you even extend and make your, your whole top of your body, your tor top of your torso even more in the second breath. So it's even bigger. And then when you exhale the second time, you, you let all the go. And you put that consciousness and you just do this exercise. You, really, if you can feel even now that it's like a mini rebirthing moment that happens in you. You know, it's a very, very strong, very powerful exercise. And it takes really short time. And if you embed this consciousness that I just told you to transform whatever comes into you, transform it to something that you can use. And that's it. And then even if you eat a little bit like this, like this of course, don't exaggerate. Yeah? But you eat something, too much sugar, too much sugar, you do something. So you, you use the same thing. You transform it like this. And yeah. That's it. <sighs> yeah, it's funny, Jonathan. I've been experimenting with this myself um, through breath and through consciousness. And uh, I just proclaim I am, I am that, which is everything. And in that, everything is harmonious and nothing can harm us. Um, so I include not only myself, I include the whole planet. Um, when I do this, um, the whole region here, when I see this, uh, it feels so good doing it. I can't, I can't tell how good it feels. And um, many times I observe also when I do this in meditation, I look up and it's dispersed. I like to think, Wow, this is powerful. Imagine 500 of us doing this at the same time. Um, I have these dreams <laughs> <laughs> of joining many people doing this kind of things, what we can do. It's amazing. We are powerful beyond measure. It's incredible. And it feels the love is incredible when I connect to these thoughts. Um, and what we can do, it's also, uh, I've been traveling a lot lately. And uh, as you know, sometimes it's very hard in air airports and uh, there's a lot of people with a lot of fear. So they get angry many times because you're not wearing the mask or, or it slip down or needs many hours. And, and I literally, it's like, I can't have it on. Right. So I take it out and um, for a second a few seconds to read and then someone becomes really angry and i do the same thing and i don't it happens immediately everybody and then in a few seconds everybody has it out and nobody's afraid and everybody's laughing again and smiling it's so powerful it's just so powerful right it's like we create what we project so if we are very fearful uh, we're projecting that all the time. We need to be very mindful that we are powerful. We are that. I am that that I am. We are that. There's no separation. So if we project fearful, we're going to attract that. We are super powerful. If we project love, we are going to attract that too. And health and 
nothing will affect us then because uh, we are that yeah. <laughs> it's in every one of us there's it's um it's beautiful i feel all is working for us in a sense uh, um, i have deep, deep trust and knowledge of this i know this very deeply inside so i hope i can transmit some of this uh, calm everything is all right it's working for our awakening even if it thinks it's working in the opposite. <laughs> and I would like to invite you to Israel to <laughs> help people come down. It's a lot of work. I would love to have come, you. Eva. You've been saying that a lot, and it may happen I'll soon. I'll have vibe, it's not the shame. Tzfat would be good for you, or Yushalayim. No, Yushalayim is too fiery for you. Or um, Galilee. I am, I am learning how to ground these spiritual energies now more and more. So I'm less afraid now of that too. Oh. I've been reminding me of that too. Of don't be yeah. afraid you're that. Why are you afraid of that, that right. you are? <laughs> uh, so not fear, not fear fire anymore. Okay, mm -hmm. I've been working in the jungle with exactly this. Um, not fear Jerusalem anymore. Jerusalem for me, it's fire. Yeah. It's it's been fire since I don't I don't know since I can think of it. Um, I haven't been there yet, but it's like uh, walking into the fire. <laughs> we'll it's see very, you then. Very bright. It's very very bright here. Yeah. Um, the, the, because there's a there's a rule that you have to build all the buildings with uh, Jerusalem stone, and um, and a lot of it has shades of fire within it a lot of it's very white but anyway the the light with the sun when it's when it's a sunny day and you look at the city then it's just like so bright it's so it's almost like a bright light that's almost burning you you know it's amazing it's very very strong very powerful it's very <laughs> interesting uh, for sure it's a uh, it's a place that uh, has a very very intense strong energy but I think that uh, you and Rita are very much, uh, you're absolutely able to <laughs> to be here, to, to do your thing here. You know, if you're, if you're coming here, you might. Uh, she might calm able. down the country, the whole country. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's also really important. Yeah, the, the you know, relaxing and uh, just like being with it, whatever it is, just to be, to be calm and accepting of what it is even if it's not what you want in the moment it's okay just mm -hmm. accept it and, and just uh, try to find the positive in it celebrate it and uh, I mean just just learn from it and basically uh, not to not to cancel too much for sure yeah. <sighs> Wow, yeah, I feel that I feel it so strong. You know, I really want to share this Amazonian song with you, but I, I have it only on my uh, I think I have it only on my phone. Oh, and I have the link. So I, I'll send it, I'll send it to you to you guys later. Amazonian. I would just, you want to do a parallel between you said the brightness of Jerusalem and the brightness of the summers of Sweden. It's it's a bit like it's it's also can be like whoa get wired it's like ooh, so much light pretty intense you have a lot of light in the winter because it's so white <laughs> yeah if you're up in the north you have a lot of snow yeah so some parallels a little bit yeah but it, but yeah yeah but it's but it's different in, in jerusalem it's, uh, no, no here i used to have a lot of trouble with that actually jonathan um not anymore i think everything i've done now in the jungle has worked and um, so I, I managed to handle these energies, as I said, much better. But it's so intense a light because uh, right now it may be two hours more. It's 11. Two hours more of darkness. And in two hours, already it's coming. <laughs> and literally, it was like, boom, like someone was lighting your pineal. It's uh, yeah. the birds start singing. It's 1 a.m. <laughs> So that's why they call it midnight sun. Um, and it's you can't sleep. It's it's so hyper. It's so happy all the time. It's almost impossible to calm down to, to rest, right? And it's like that all the summer. 
so it it gets quite quite intense in that in that sense um. but the swedes are actually good at the day like i remember at 10 o'clock they go to bed i'm like hello let's go take a walk and yeah I'm, it's like me it's like i need to go because i need to sleep otherwise <laughs> it's like literally i have two hours um, it's tough it's more difficult right i i rest that's what i do I, even if i'm not sleeping but yes we are really good we get really good here huh? uh, eva you know that to mm. go to bed in summer to get, to go to bed early yeah it's only for this reason because at three you're completely up <laughs> but you're more sensitive not, like nothing you can do about it yeah and in the winter everybody's sleeping so it's, it's awesome more anyway um let's see the extreme the extremes in uh in uh, the north or the south of the planet the extremes of having a very long uh, long days in the summer and short very very short days or long nights in the winter it's and uh, it suggests that there is a there is a more of a in some way kind of balance because you you get to really experience the one side for a few months and slowly move to the other side and then when you're in a place like jerusalem or even closer to the equator uh, you're you're sort of like experiencing both sides in the same day in the same hour it's like so it's in in a way much more intense energy because you're moving between the left and the right the black and the white whatever it is you know mm -hmm. uh, you're much more it's it, it, the change the change is much more intense it's much more it's faster uh, where you have more time to sort, sort of like sink into it and go deep into it in a, in poles more closer to the poles <coughs> yes i let you all go thank you so much thank you thank That's you for sharing Thank you so much, Amrita. It's wonderful. And it's to so see nice you. to see you. <laughs> nice. In a while. Very All nice to see you and be with you day. here. God bless yeah. you. We'll be in touch soon. Thank you yes. for joining. I hope I hope I can come soon and meet you all uh, in presence in the physical. Is that the shame? Bye bye. Take care. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. So good. Kunat, kunat. Yeah, that's Swedish. Kunat. Yeah, kunat. So we, <coughs> when it starts closing down, it's 12 o'clock. Wow. It's nice to, to, <coughs> excuse me, I got a little, little cough. But <coughs> if there's a closing song, you have your Natan, that would be lovely. And um, it's really nice to have, have he heard from all these holy people in the holy city. So I feel like we did a good job of, uh, connecting all the elements and, and the prayers. I heard the song. Oh, yeah, it's... Uh... I don't know if I played it last time or not. Um, it's a song for uh, protecting our world. Mm. Just gonna put the lyrics here, and I'll sing it for you. This is in Hebrew, so I'll, I'll just tell you the the words um, uh, we want to protect the world because there is only one and it belongs to everybody there's a lot of colors and qualities a lot of opinions and ideas uh, what is known is that we also made mistakes what's for sure is that we tried yet there is still time to heal the world yet there is still space for uh, purifying, it's becoming clearer. We agree that the world is changing. We uh, agree that it can be beautiful. 
we bless life and we really want it, especially for our children, uh, that, that they may grow in a healthy and corrected world. Uh, we long to live well and with each other. We are capable to create the reality we want, to uh, put an intention, to let it go, to believe and to wake up. Every day we see uh, miracles and wonders. Every hour we hear songs and music. And uh, every minute we breathe and pulsate. With every second, everything gets recreated from inside. And we choose to love the world. We love the world. Yonatan, from what language is this translated? This is from this is from Hebrew, and there's um, mm. uh, just the last verse is is like uh, it's Spanish, English, Hebrew, Arabic. Okay. But uh, but the but the song is uh, is is Hebrew most most Hebrew. <clears throat> to everybody it's uh, thank you everybody for it was so interesting i got this uh, websites open now uh, pure global light and the voice of gaia and I have things to listen and to yeah. learn it's great it's beautiful i love it check out the rabbi greenberg's website it's very very beautiful yeah that's what it is pure gl global light 
That's yeah. what it is. What am I doing? Yeah. yeah. It looks super amazing. Also, what like I, I uh, it's I, I had to do some some uh, uh, focus also. So I, I only heard bits and pieces of what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. But uh, but when he's uh, I think it's his wife, right? That came on. No, Esther is his uh, Kala, his uh, son's wife. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, but she's she's um, what she, what she said was uh, was amazing about how uh, to to uh, uh, like re-enter the whole technology consciousness in a, from a new from a new way and to actually like aim for technology to be as spiritual as possible. That's what I got from it, you know, mostly. And it's beautiful, I love it. You know, this is what I believe and I, I, I follow it for many years already. I think that technology, it's uh, just a tool to make our lives more spiritual, more intensely spiritual, and more just to elevate our, our consciousness, our field, everything to expand ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, technology, electronics, whatever it is, you know, yeah. She was also talking about, I uh, wrote it down here, um, that we have a built-in guidance system. Uh, so we don't, we don't really need to fear that we can't make a decision in the right place or not, but if we just relax into our own divine power through Hashem, through God consciousness, then we are guided in the right way. It's just relaxing into that. Um, and, and listening who he, also the rabbi was talking about listening or she yeah to listening through the third eye or did she say the third ear she oh, called it both both she called it both yeah no she, she That's interesting. pointed out to the okay. third eye and she both called it the third ear and the third eye but that's fine it's actually if you look at it you know, it really uh, goes into the brain, and then mm -hmm. it's like the meeting point where the eyes and the, you know, uh, the ears connect. <clears throat> so it's really like it's more of a, yeah, it's a pineal gland. It's a sort of like an extrasensory uh, point in the in the head. You know, it's it's so it's not exactly like a seeing or hearing. It's maybe both and maybe even more so maybe it's also to do with taste and smell and actually other frequencies that we're not exposed to with our other senses you know so you it's okay to call it the third ear or the third nostril or the third whatever you want you know just <laughs> reminds me of, of uh, alia mclean's sharing about the smelling of ganeden and they say i think when mashiach yeah. comes we're only going to have smell right I don't know. I think that it's just, <clears throat> I don't think that it's going to be limited to smell. I think it's going to be just one sense because it's just a spectrum of, of, of frequencies. Mm. And that's all there is. There is this big wide spectrum of frequencies. And our only experience is that I, I, I think I talked about it the other time that we have five fingers and we have five senses. And if you just make a circle around your hand, then you realize that only your fingers is what you experience sensing in reality. And everything in between, it's, uh, it's everything else that you're not sensing, but maybe you are sensing it in your mind because you analyze and know this. Maybe you're sensing it in your heart because you're feeling. Mm. Maybe you are seeing energies or seeing something, auras, whatever it is. Then all these things are, are in between what the senses are showing us, are exposing us to, you know? But there's there's all this other rest of what it is really, and I think that in heaven, yeah, yeah, you can say yeah, it's just going to be smell, but maybe you know, maybe it's just going to be a um, because the our memory, if you smell something that you smelled when you were two or three years old, you're going to remember it. You're going to be like, I remember this. I was like, <laughs> it all of a sudden will wake you up to remember mm -hmm. when you were two mm -hmm. years old some memory. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing, you know, and it's like the first sense that you get. So I think. That if we are uh, uh, without uh, limitation of the body of the five senses, and we're actually experiencing the whole prism of what it is, of, of what's there, what's out there in reality, then, then it can be related to as one sense that's just sensing all of it together. Mm -hmm. and there's a oneness mm -hmm. there. It's like, just like look at in any direction you want, you're going to, 
see so much. It's just so, so complicated. There's so much, you know, you know how fractals look, right? A little bit. Mm -hmm. So if you look at fractals, um, have you ever looked at a, a video of moving fractals? Yeah, like the Mandelbrot series? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But not just the Mandelbrot. Also, no, the Mandelbrot is more about moving in and out of a fractal. Ah. That video. But I'm talking about actually moving fractals. Mm -hmm. You know, there are videos you can look on YouTube and they're, they're not just zooming into the Mandelbrot, but actually the fractals are in motion, in 3D kind of motion. Mm -hmm. So really, this is how it kind of works <laughs> beyond the senses, yeah? Mm -hmm. It kind of works like this. There's just tons of information there. It's so much information that it's impossible to, with the way we are now, it's impossible to process. What is this? It's too much, you know? It's like so much. With colors, we can't see so many divine, amazing colors that are beyond the spectrum. It's the same thing. So when the, the redemption comes, we will be more holistic in our senses, is what you're saying, like a, like a more of an experiential thing. It's, it's just going to be like a, a, a united kind of experience, like a oneness, experience of oneness, like there's that's all it is. There's all of it. Here you go. You can look at it. You can see all of it. Mm -hmm. It's like they say that if you look at God, you're going to die, right? You see God, you die because you can't, you can't process. It's too much, you know? But I think if we get to this place of Lula, then it's okay. We can see it. It's no problem because mm -hmm. we're ready for it. So we can see the whole of it, what it is. Mm -hmm. It's much more elaborate than we can imagine at the moment, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? Can experience it, you know, meditation, psychedelics, uh, or you know, antiogens. Can experience it for sure. Some of it, get windows to it, but not really the whole of it, the totality of it. It's uh, it's more than we are able to at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we're working on it. You know, we have uh, you, you have to come to Mitzpah here one time. You know, it's just, uh, it's amazing. You can see the old city from there. You can see the Dome of the Rock from there. Mitzpah Is that Mitzpeh where? Yeah. That's where we had the event. Um, All right. Yeah. Last week, okay. Monday, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, the full moon mm. event. And uh, there, was a, there was a lunar eclipse. We didn't see the moon at all. Just like at some point we saw it like a little bit through the clouds, <laughs> not yeah. so much. It was like but at 5.30 and a... I was near you, and I was like, I think a little um, on, the, on the eclipse. So you didn't, what time did you look at it? in the early morning oh it was later no no right. we just couldn't we couldn't see the moon because it was overcast oh, yeah right it was we just couldn't see it at all but it was just like you could see it through the clouds like the halo of it kind of thing but not yeah. really clearly but uh most of the night it was just too overcast that we couldn't see it at all uh -huh. yeah. but it was a, it was a strong experience and that place is very very powerful hmm. i think it's a it's a nice place to start this kind of uh, process that we're doing because it's not dead in the city, but it is like has a direct line to the old city and to the whole, wow. whole area, Zion hmm. and the whole thing, you know? Okay. And I think that uh, there is like a, it's like that place and then there's Hal Zion, Mount Zion, and then afterwards the old city, and there's like a line like that. Is so it near the Tayelet or behind the Tayelet? It's much further away. Hmm much further away it's it's a uh, let's say more or less in the same direction of the tayelet yeah pretty much just a little but it, but another five kilometers or so maybe we can do an event in in the um, autumn near the hagim on that place we're gonna we're, we're doing a... now we're, we're doing an event there every full moon that's the idea oh yeah Great. And we call it Mifgash O. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I think it would be great if you can, to, you can bring it. I mean, we have uh, just people. And I don't know when you're going to be in Israel. If you're, you're, gonna, you, you're going soon, right? To back to Sweden? Or? Yeah, but Chagim Amo is here. <coughs> yeah. I would like to visit that place. Sounds great. Yeah. Okay, so... Fantastic small. 
So we'll conclude the evening. <laughs> conclude sounds very formal. <coughs> Excuse me. You want you want to uh, let's see if I can find this. One second, I'm gonna look. I don't know if I have it. It's nice to see you, Laura. Yes, it's nice to see you and to hear Jonathan's singing. I love his music and and um, Amrita and all the others. I was I really appreciate the chance to be with you all uh, again. It's been a while. I'm in Florida because, as you well know, my mother died last summer, and we're finally celebrating her life in six days from now. Oh, wow. um, and so all my cousins are coming from four or five different states and wow. and a lot of her former colleagues, the ones who are younger than her, because the thing is, when you die at almost 97, your peer group is are pretty much already gone. So um, all the friends that were her age, but one or well, but two are uh, are not around. But she had a lot of students and uh, and a lot of younger friends. So. Of course, I'm in the throes of preparing all of this. So please keep me in your prayers that I'm able to provide her the service that was worthy of her. What day is it going to be? Five days, you say? Yeah, Saturday the 28th. Okay. It'll be Saturday evening, May 28th. So so thank you for that. And thank you for this. I'm, I'm actually going to have to um, leave right now because I need to be somewhere at 5.30 here. It's 5.24. PM. Okay. It was really okay. nice to have you with us. Uh, well, I'm so, so glad to be back. Thank you for uh, calling on me. Yes. Okay. Ciao. Take care, Laura. Bless you. Also, if you want, I can uh, read this little prayer. Okay. Uh, it's called Prayer to Close the Current. And I, I don't see it. I, close I, the current. The way. Prayer to, to close the current. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's from Templo Magiagua. It's a Brazilian uh, uh, sanctuary uh, that has, they do a lot of work that is very, very spiritual and energetic and shamanic, some of it, and very special people. And uh, it's also uh, the Templo Magiagua, like the temple of the mother of water. Mm. So connecting also again to the water. Water. In case, in case you didn't have enough water today. <laughs> you can have it. It's always good to have a lot. Yeah. Okay, so it's like this. We close the work of today, giving thanks to all the beauty received, all the teachings, all the light. We ask the source of all creation, the essence of life, to illuminate our decisions. May we be clear enough to make the choices that fill our lives with love, peace, abundance, and creativity. May the expression of our being be one of freedom, truth, and harmony. May the expression of this, which is our truest and most intimate being, enlighten everything around us. May these words pass through our lips. May the divine actions be manifested through our work. And may we never stop being amazed by the beauty of life within us and in all beings, in each tree, in each star, and in each grain of sand. <sighs> May we recognize God in everything and everything in God. We give thanks to life, which includes all things. We give thanks for our lives, for the lives of those close to us and for the lives of all beings throughout the universes. We give thanks to ourselves and to everyone in this current 
for allowing this creative force to guide us now and always. Thank you, life. Aho. Amen. Amen. Ah, well, excuse me, shivers, you know.